All right, what's up, everyone? Uh, I'm Kate Tom Brady here, joined by Mike Hollow and Dynasty. What's up, guys? Hey, guys. Yo. All right, so uh, I know Mike you had several things you wanted to talk about. Do you want to start us off here? Yeah, just, um, you know, obviously the situation that occurred on Twitter, what was it, two days ago now kind of exploded. Everyone was, everyone was talking about it. And I made a video about the state of the Mortal Kombat scene. Uh, and in the video, I was trying to take like less shots at people and really just try to like drive home the fact that even though, because obviously I've been, I think I've been typecast as a Tekken player to a lot of people because they've only just sort of seen my channel now. But obviously I've been all over the place and I was trying to like put the argument forward that at some point the nether realm scene will be united it's just unfortunate that nrs has kind of thrown us off a cliff and we're trying to figure out how to land and uh but I, the reason that i messaged uh, dynasty is because i think i think your issues i don't know if it's with the scene or the people that work at nrs stem way back and i wanted to kind of like ask you when it started because there seemed to be a bit of confusion on twitter um i'd say probably the uh, the infamous ed boone tweet going back to pre mk11 launch boone did an interview where he essentially said i, I don't know the exact quote um but boone was essentially saying that a lot of fan favorites would probably be dlc characters and at the time this may be like a month removed from the mk11 reveal event and um i made a video essentially just being like yo don't be surprised if I think there was like eight roster spots left on the MK11 roster that we didn't know. Despite the leaks, we didn't know if that the leaks were 110 percent legit yet. They were, but at the time, you know, still speculation. And I made a video saying like, "Hey guys, don't be surprised if you get uh, Devora or uh, these new characters people weren't asking for, and the likes of like a Rain, a Smoke, a Sindel, a uh, Nightwolf would probably be like DLC." I didn't know the future. Uh, I'm not Kronika. But I came out and said that. And Boone, immediately within an hour, uh, quote tweeted my video and was like, Dynasty, this is bullshit. You're better than that. And that essentially is what started the uh, the divide between me and Netherrealm and WB. Because at the time, I was contracted, I guess. like, uh, I guess I can talk about it. I guess if you make certain amount of videos of Mortal Kombat, uh, WB's PR team will come out and give you like this brand deal per se. They'll send you like review copies. Uh, they'll fly you out if you, you know, are a good boy. And all that stopped the moment that that tweet happened. So I'd say it was probably right before MK11 officially launched. And come to find out, I mean, uh, yeah, the roster spots that we were hoping were, you know, the Reigns of the world, the Nightwolves of the world were new characters like Cetrion and, you know, Collector. Yeah. And I ended up being right. And I think that rubbed Boone or maybe WB the wrong way. Um, don't know. But ever since then, it's just been like... I feel like I've been like the sacrificial lamb of like content creation. I don't know. And I wanted to ask you because I had a conversation uh, with someone. It might have been fate and we were talking about you. And at the time he mentioned the fact that um, you had you like you cover leaks on your channel every like every now and then or whatever. But other people do as well. And yeah. since you were in their good graces at one point, do you know? Because I'm not actually sure if these other content creators are also uh, covering leaks. Yeah, even going back to the days of MK11, um, I didn't really change the, the content I was making. Believe it or not, you can go back to my channel. The first ever upload I had was uh, MK9's leaked character select screen. Yeah. So I've always kind of just consistently been myself, which meant covering leaks. My whole idea that I subscribe to is like, okay, if IGN can talk about it, GameSpot can talk about it, all these giant corporations, why can't some dude just take it upon himself to give his opinion? And that's kind yeah. of always been my thing. So yeah, I've, I was covering leaks, I think, even before I signed the, uh, the deal with WB. If you remember, there was like email leaks that mentioned like Ronda Rousey was going to be at the reveal event and... Mm -hmm that sort i talked about that i know like other creators pro players i could name a couple i really don't want to but uh i know in particular super uh honeybee 
a lot of people like that, both sides, content creators, strictly and pro players were doing what I was doing. So yeah, I've always really just covered leaks. And apparently that's the reason why I got quote unquote blacklisted according to Alan Johnson, the head of WBPR currently. Cause I asked them, I was like, Hey dude, we signed the brand deal. I haven't heard from you in like a year. Is it something with my content? Did I piss someone off? Like, how do yeah. you go from, you know, being treated like your voice matters to essentially being, you know, exiled from the community. And the response I got was, oh, it's because you covered leaks. And I replied back and I was like, well, that's interesting because I was doing that forever. And if that was an issue, all you had to do was say, don't cover leaks directly. Yeah. And I would have been like, OK, cool. I respect that. Just tell me that, that, that it's not helping the company. I thought, if anything, I always thought like tinfoil hat theory was like WB's approach to marketing was to do things like that. So I know some people, uh, other companies have been like exposed for purposely leaking things. Don't know if that's the case for WB in another realm, but I that's thought if I, anything, suspect, I actually yeah. suspect that as well. The way it goes about the, the amount of leaks that come from Mortal Kombat and Injustice, it it's seems crazy. like someone's doing it from the inside to me. And the fact that we didn't get punished, because again, I was covering leaks before I signed the brand deal with them. And it was almost like they were using these YouTubers as like their their PR. So again, it was interesting because that was the response I got. And I replied back just being like, well, that doesn't really make sense, especially when people that I'm seeing you fly out to capture events and, you know, things of that sort are doing the same content I'm making. And I got left on red. Um, the people that manage my brand deals messaged probably five or six different contacts at WB that they had, including Alan Johnson. And we got the same response like, oh, well, it, it's the leaks. Oh, well, we'll keep them in mind. Oh, it, it's nothing personal. We're, we bring him up sometimes still when it comes to feedback. And if, you know, he's, he's, if he's talking about Mortal Kombat, it was just the runaround bullshit fucking lie. And uh, it's really not changed. And as of late, man, like, it's funny because TikTok was a whole thing for me because they came out and they featured me on like their TikTok, like right when Mortal Kombat 1 uh, had their debut trailer. I shit you not, after like years of not knowing if they liked me or not, I'm mm -hmm. literally featured in like their first ever MK1 video. It was a bunch of reactions. I'm like, they end the video with me and they like start it with me. And I'm like, oh, cool. I guess they like me again, right? Yeah. Um, never asked me for permission to use it. None of that. But come to find out, they still hate me. So that's kind of where that's been. I don't know what, if that that's, helps anything, but no, I don't it know. does because uh, I think it's good to clear up the fact that you were doing leaks beforehand and they were cool with it. But as soon as you were yeah. critical, then they yeah. decide to. That that kind of gives more credence to the idea that Pig of the Hut was shilling because there's no reason to make a comment asking NRS to put us on a list just because we're being critical. That would be like somebody in the Tekken scene saying, put main man on a list just because he's critical of Tekken or he makes some videos where he's angry at the game. Uh, that was one of the most childish things I've read on Twitter with regards to Mortal Kombat I've ever read. And one of the most incriminating tweets that you could write. If he's not on payroll, he's definitely fishing for it. Well, the to add to your point there, there's another YouTuber uh, known by True Underdog. And as I recall, there's a video where he's like, we're getting 20 more DLC characters. And I remember, Mike, you covered that and you said, well, this obviously has to be a leak because it's not known anywhere. Uh, and yeah. it just seems like it's okay to talk things like this as long as you are constantly like an NRS apologist. Um and especially when the game is getting such bad press, then it's okay. I guess at the time Dynasty did it, MK was at top of the world, coming off MKX. People were looking forward for Mortal Kombat again. And he did that, and it's like, well, you know, hey, we're Mortal Kombat. Now they're getting really bad press, so when you've got major content creators being an apologist for them. Uh, it's okay, you, it's, know, you know, I guess. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, anything you can to give a spike to our to our game. Hey, we look at all the content we got coming out. There's no possible way you could know there's 20 DLC characters incoming without some type of knowledge. It's just impossible to do that. So really, whether it's true or not, it's still being covered like a leak. Uh, yeah. So 
Yeah, either way. You see, that's kind of what I... The, I, the whole thing just makes no sense to me. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to have some type of standard, at least be consistent with it. You know what I mean? That's... I don't get it. Well, it's very clear that, like, you can't criticize them, otherwise they don't want to talk to you. I mean, I... Yeah. I was trying to make it very clear to Pig and to anyone else that was involved in that whole thread that I've never been interested in company handouts. And I, I'm well aware of how, you know, to I understand how people are when you talk about their products and if you don't frame it in a positive light. So I already knew going on YouTube that, because I've been invited by WB before. I got invited to, me and Foxy got invited to go and play Injustice 2 uh, just before, I think like two weeks before it came out in central London. So I've, I've been called them before. But I haven't had any contact with them since. But I already knew making the videos that I was making that that was going to like sever any sort of ties to them. So it's, that tweet was just, it was very incriminating to me. And I was a little bit shocked that he just outright said that because I don't know what else you could take from that tweet other than this guy is either on payroll or he's fishing for opportunities. And interesting enough, you throw in the fact that a lot of people that are quote unquote WB sponsored were supporting that, liking it and sharing it. Oh, were they? Yeah, it doesn't really look the best. <laughs> I, I had no so, idea. So what? Yeah. People that were work, people that work for WB were reposting were, what he and liking it. And I, I saw that. and I was like, damn, it really is like uh, an echo chamber. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> they could they could put me on a list. I couldn't give less of a fuck. Yeah, I mean, and you brought up in your video, Mike, that you, uh, as a Tekken player, people that don't know your history at the FGC. Uh, in the MK scene, because the MK scene is fairly new. I, for some reason, MK scene has a lot of people who are not in other fighting games. It's kind of weird. They have people that are involved in in the FGC as involved. They've tried Street Fighter, Tekken. So, you know what I mean? They've they played a little bit of everything. And then MK scene has a bunch of players who are new to fighting games and have never tried another fighting game and may never try one. There's a lot of more that of MK than any other scene, I feel. So, yeah. Uh, they're like, oh, well, Mike Hollow, he's a Tekken player or he's a Soul Calibur player, right? Because they weren't around in MK9. They, MK players don't even know their own history. So they don't even know the history of the game. They don't know about MK9. The newer ones don't know anything about MKX. Uh, so to that's, them, that's they, why I felt I felt it was necessary to make that video because I, I understand like my channel gained a lot of subscribers in, in the last couple of months. So a lot of people might just see Tekken now. And I understand people also don't go to your page and press oldest, but all of my old videos are still there. So you can see that I've kind of floated around. And even before I came onto YouTube, I was playing back in the arcades for Third Strike. I mm -hmm. think when people meet me, they assume that I'm in my 20s, but I'm about to turn uh, 32. So I was at Trocadero Arcades. I was and you at played Save MK9. World. You were there at the start of the NRS era. You I was there right at the beginning. Me and, me and Problem X were in the first like big U, uh, London tournament in the grand finals. I, I put in the video. I was in the second big tournament in the grand finals against Foxy. Um, I was at, I was one of the eight players that was invited to the Fatal 8 thing that they were doing. I know they did one for you guys in America, uh, but they did one for us here at Comic-Con and I competed there and got fourth. So I've been involved in Mortal Kombat for a long time, but at the same time, I was also playing Soul Calibur, Tekken, Smash Brothers, uh, I was even playing other games that I played this game called Gotcha Force. I don't know if any of you remember it. Mm -hmm. And never heard of that. <laughs> it, was, it was a GameCube game where you like you controlled these toys, kind of like Toy Story, but a Japanese version, like very Gundam. And it got very competitive. And I used to play that a lot with my friends. So I've played loads of different games. So I, I felt the need to clarify just because I think there's a misconception of how old I am and there's a misconception sure. of what games I play. Uh I want to give a little better background on myself as well because it's going to go against a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about with Pig here. Uh, I've been around since Mortal Kombat 1. I was one of the first people to ever play it. I played it literally on October 8th, 1992, the day it was released. Um, as a, you know, I think I was 15. I'm an old man now, obviously. But I was 15 at that time in 92. And I remember the owner of the arcade, a lot of us that would came, I was there playing Street Fighter quite a bit. Uh, he would let people, people that would frequent there know, hey, I got this new game coming out. You're supposed to be able to rip somebody's head off or whatever. So my first looking at the characters, the very first character I picked was Sub-Zero. He just looked really cool to me, the way his stance. He looked 
whatever it was. Obviously, he ended up being not great in that game, but uh, so obviously, but there was no real competitive scene, so you could still play whoever you wanted and, and, and play your locals. And if somebody good came around, you'd obviously have to play better characters. But that's kind of how I got my start in Mortal Kombat from the very first day. I dare say, in the outside of that studio, I'm one of the very first people in the world to ever select Sub Zero outside of the testing staff, uh, and I was always an MK guy, even through the 3D games. You know, I traveled, competed as when tournaments came around in the 2D games. I even traveled and competed in these small tournaments for the 3D games just because I love Mortal Kombat and I wanted to play people that without good netcode or netcode at all, there was no other way to play them. You had to travel, get to go to low other areas, play people that you you see on forums but never got a chance to actual play. So it was really cool. When I remember Com those forums, those yeah. 3D forums. They yeah. had like the clicks and the factions. Yep. When Mortal Kombat 9 came out, so you know people like Pig and, and I guess newer players today only remember me from like, you know, the MK11 days. That's going back six years, right? So, or five years. So you're looking at uh, people like, you know, five years of quote unquote complaining, I guess, can seem like eternity to somebody. But, yeah, they missed their first few Super Bowls. Yeah, they missed my first few ones. Uh, <laughs> you know, or like this, con you know, most people have no idea anything about me when I still hear people say, well, Tom, he placed once, well, once in MK9, never to be seen again. Just, it's, it's, it, it, makes, it makes me wonder, do people actually know your, you know your competitive history? So in MK9, I, did, I, I, I w tested the game for one week at NetherRealm. Uh, the guy that ran Test Your Might at the time, Storms, he said, hey, can you do a bunch of free guides uh, so we can have the... And I was like, well, you know, my experience is very limited um, with the game outside of maybe some 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 stuff that I've had, uh, you know, whatever. And he's like, well, you know, just go ahead and make some guides if you can. So um, I made a few guides for the game, obviously, that when the when the quote unquote beta came out, which is just four or five characters. I had more time on some of those characters. But you got to so I did a few guides for like Johnny Cage, Sub Zero, Scorpion, etc. And and a lot of that stuff didn't even apply because they, they took it out. Like all well, these safe jumps from Scorpion used to be a completely different character. So I don't know how much of that even applied, but when the game came out I updated a lot of them and I did full free character guides for every single character on that site. And um uh the I did shows. There was a show called STB Live done by Silent One. And he said, hey, would you do a show every week uh, just to kind of answer questions? So people, that, I thought the best way at that time to get changed into the game was to have people abuse the most broken things. Cyrex's bug command grab when he had that bomb trap. And it was a 100% combo because it was, a, it was, a, it was a, unless you were a Jedi and could tech the one frame tech command throw that was bugged, uh, it was a 100% combo because what Cyrex could do is do a full combo and with a net restand, right? Uh, and then as soon as the net goes away, grab you a perfect frame grab and you couldn't tech it. It was infinite. It was 100%. So I thought the best thing to do was to expose this immediately so that, you know, it would became known like, hey, this is kind of broken. Now, obviously, that made it a real pain in the ass for me as a competitor, but I thought that's the best way to get changed, not you know, quote unquote, bitching and moaning as, you know, certain farm animals, animals from Atlanta will talk about. Uh, I then did, uh, you know, talked about Quan Chi's rune trap. I did guides about that. Anything that I thought was extremely powerful that I wanted them to look at, you know, right away. Obviously, the rune trap was fine because Quan Chi was what he was. But there were a lot of things that I did videos on and tech videos on guides for Sub-Zero, matchups, etc., the quote-unquote crying and complaining, this something that is that is revisionist history by Pig of the Hut. Um, and a lot of people, I think, still, uh, the people there, those people that will, 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 will see what I did as crying and complaining, I guess, point of views and all. But I brought up the input bug. I noticed that there was a bug in which I'd be crouching and I would just randomly stand up even though I didn't release down. So I thought that was kind of strange. Or I'd go to do a down two and I would get standing two. And I know I was holding down. I didn't do it same time. So I, at that time, deduced there's some type of bug. I didn't know how to recreate it where, at least to me at that time, at random, 
your input will not come out and you'll only get your button command. And NRS's response to this was, it's, uh, I'm crying about the game, I'm complaining about the game, I just don't want to blame myself and, and, and my lack of being able to do inputs. And then, you know, it was a pretty big meme in the scene that I was kind of like, oh, Tom, quote unquote, blames the input bug. And of course, then it happened to more people and then it became like a big deal once it was proven it existed. And then years later, Ketchup and Mustard found out how to duplicate it. But uh, th that game was, uh, it was just very strange because I've never seen a studio deny an inherent bug and then publicly attack the person who drew awareness to it. Understanding that they couldn't fix it and not calling them out for it, fixing it, or it even being in the game, just letting people know that it is in the game. And it is, a, you know, I've never seen anything like that before. And even like little quote unquote things that I said I wish that my character had as Sub Zero, I never cried about the character ever a single day. I did matchup videos, I would talk about matchups that were hard. Now, of course, the community being new kind of the MK troll thing to do is no matter who you are, especially me, if you say, especially if you're a Sub-Zero player, if you say a particular match is hard, they will tell you you're downplaying and your character wins that match 10-0. And of course you wanna just, just for people that play the character, draw awareness to it. Hey, listen, this is the hard match. This is what you have to do to win. Anyone who's ever faced me in tournament, be it Rio, M2 Dave, anyone who uses characters that are cry, I'm probably one of the only people that didn't cry about a character like Cabal in MK9. I just made countless tech videos. But if I were to say things like, Sub-Zero's mid doesn't hit mid against half the cast, you're crying about the character. This is the only game, and no one says Nii is crying about Ling, right? Well, hey, my, at least some mid should hit her. Uh, you know, but in Mortal Kombat, just asking for functionality to be functional, not in this game, but keep it in mind for the next game is considered crying about the game. Uh, in MK9, I largely was someone who was just known for putting out tech videos. How it became known that I was quote unquote crying about the game is just some people who viewed anything at all as crying. In MKX, again, there was none of this crying about the game. The infamous video, the clone does not function properly. This came because my criticism of NRS was they did a major, there was a patch two, two or three days before a major tournament, the first major ever. Uh, for the game, Combo Breaker 2015. And they patched the game and one of the things they touched was Sub-Zero's Ice Clone. And I never actually complained about the clone being touched, although that is how it is remembered uh, in history. What I said was, if you're going to patch the game before a tournament, there's a block infinite, which one pig of the hut absolutely annihilated Netherrealm over because he lost to it in tournament. Uh, there was a, and I said, if you're gonna patch a game before a major, why would you not then remove a block infinite, which ended up going on to win the tournament? I understand it didn't win against Sonic Fox because he couldn't do it to uh, Aaron Black, but he could do it to several characters. And it was done several times in that tournament. And it actually happened to Pig, who turns around to the NetherRealm staff while it was happening to him and says, what am I supposed to do? Clearly, he doesn't think his name shouldn't be put on a list for doing that. And do you and Pig have like a history outside of um, outside of tournaments? Because he seemed it seemed like a personal vendetta. No, myself and Pig have always been in MK9. People who really wanted to to outdo the other one, but I've always respected Pig, and I, at least I always thought the same. But obviously not. And we we were friends, absolutely. And I still consider him a friend. I don't think anything in the gaming world should destroy a personal friendship in in the real world. Um, uh, but the, the reality is that, uh, he has done the same thing. And I, I remember there was another thing that they used to do something not called a combat cast, but it was something else. Remember they do it, they do it, they would do like a little video and they would sit down and talk. And, uh, I don't remember what it was called, but I remember one of the changes they made to clone, they did something else, but they did something to the EX clone and you could now do that and keep yourself safe all the time, but they could blow through the regular clone and punish you. So it was, I thought, okay, this is cool. I, I tried it in tournament and I still got the regular clone. The guy blew me up, armor right through it and killed me. So I was very bothered by the fact that I couldn't hit two buttons at the same time. I thought, how could I be that incompetent in that moment for top eight? So I went home and I labbed and I noticed it was bugged that 
the EX clone on block because it was so much faster than the regular clone and there was some proximity to it because it was an ice clone that when you would do it, a breathing hitbox issue would consider the opponent too close in more situations and you couldn't actually get it. It would give you the regular one. Uh, because the game, because the EX clone took a bar of meter, the game, they coded the game so that if it couldn't come out, Rather than it not coming out and still taking the bar from you, you would just get the regular clone. Well, this caused the regular clone to still come out instead of nothing, and then I would get blown up. And I said, if it can't be done, then either nothing should come out or the EX should come out, not something that leaves me vulnerable because it just functionally can't happen because of this uh, bug that's causing this with the breathing hitbox. And NRS absolutely, you know, uh, excuses, blaming the game. So then I made that video, hey, the ice clone should function, is not functioning properly. I was very calm in that video. I did not roast NRS to the floor. I did not cry and complain about the ice clone. It was a very calm video. But then another player, Revolver, remixed some of my, quote unquote, uh, some of my hot takes in general and put it to a metal thing and had some of my, you know, who will stop this carnage that I, when I was yelling on stream, beating people with Jackie's, uh, gun over and over and over again. And it if you listen to it, it sounds like I'm raging about the clone and angry about the clone. But if you actually saw that video, I was doing no such thing. In an MKX, I would make countless text, vi text videos. I made matchup video after matchup video and put tons of match videos out there. None of this crying about the, the clone. Now, obviously, me uninstalling the game on stream, that was a way to troll my viewers who, for lack of better words, were absolutely horrible on Twitch. But my YouTube content had nothing to do with crying and complaining about the game, nor did I ever cry and complain about Mortal Kombat X. I made certain observations. When the Tanya thing happened, I said, you know, she's, you know, I did criticize the way NRS balances characters. And I, my point was, they don't know how to balance properly. They'll take a low tier character who's got a lot of weaknesses and some strengths, they'll steroid buff all their weaknesses and then leave their strengths and then they'll take a top tier character, remove all their strengths, but then leave their weaknesses too. So they didn't really understand game balancing. They would put powerful tools in games, which is their strength, but then they wouldn't apply common sense to said power, which would make the move seem a little too much. And I was not blowing them up. I was just saying, this is really not, if you're, going to des if you're going to balance a game, these knee-jerk balances are can be avoidable by just applying common sense when assigning said power to the character. Really think about how it affects everything. Uh, it was not crying, complaining, etc. In Injustice 1, I didn't really play it uh, half the time because I was working on Killer Instinct. In Injustice 2, I didn't really play at all. I just thought it was a remix, watered-down Injustice 1. Mortal Kombat 11 is where my quote-unquote crying came in. And this is because... In MK11, I played the game and I thought something was wrong with me. This is when I first realized there was a problem. At first, I thought something is wrong with me. See, first of all, I was a casual player. I retired. I'm like, I'm in my 40s now. I no longer have the desire to sit in front of a pool uh, of players. And my whole legacy is decided whether I win or lose this pool. I'm like, I'm done with that life. You know, I did what I did. It's, it's, it's this player's game. I don't really care about being known as a top player anymore. That was never my concern. But I'm playing the game for fun, and off the bat, I thought it was weird that the very first day of the game, I'm playing Thin Ice the very, with this quote-unquote variation system that was supposed to be custom, but now it's just two variations instead. And on day one, you know, Foxy's like, hey, he's talking to me as if I was still a competitive player, which I was no longer. Hey, you're playing the wrong variation. And I thought, well, this is very odd. This is a new game. It's the second day. I only have two choices. How can I have a wrong one? Well, if one of my two choices is wrong, then I don't have a choice. And that is the premise that this game is built on. You're going to have these choices and custom and multiple variations. And it launches with two, and I only have the choice of one, apparently. So I thought, well, this is a very flawed design. And then I really thought something was wrong with me because I'm like, you know, I played the most broken 3D MK games and stuck with them. I played games like MK9 and MKX where Sub-Zero had some of these polarizing matchups where some of them he would dominate and some of them he would lose horribly. In MKX, he, there was no middle ground. He dominated you free or he was dominated for the majority of the game up until probably the final patch when things were more leveled out. And I'm like, but now here he is. 
He doesn't really have any of these polarizing matchups. He's much better in this game than he has been in his other games, even though this is the weakest version of him ever at that point. I'm like, so really, he has an easier time fighting the cast. So there's every reason for me to stick with this game longer than I did any of the other ones. And yet I remember I'd play someone like Paul B. And like one day we were like, we're actually bored. Like he messes me and goes, you know, I'm just, I'm daydreaming here. And I, and I was like, you know, this is the thing. I'm like, I, as a non-competitive player, it's not about whether my character can win or lose or if he's better now in this game than he was in his other respective games. I am not enjoying myself. So I made videos like, hey, you know, and I always prefaced it with, it is me, in my opinion, did not roast NRS for this, is that I do not particularly enjoy the game. I find it very bland, very watered down. I feel like what I see people doing on the very first week of the game is still being done today without much deviation. And I just voiced that concern. But I I was a, I gave NRS a lot of benefit of that. People must not remember, and you can go back on my channel. I was literally marketing for people to buy Aftermath and the, uh, the Ultimate Edition. I had your pricing guide, what you get, how you buy. If you go all the way back to that content, I was an advocate. I was making prospective build guides when they announced custom variations. You could do this, you could do that. And I was saying, this is fun because obviously if they're going to do custom variations, they're going to go into the game and change some of the things that they've never addressed. Like moves that are slotted wrong, moves that do nothing but are two slots, uh, moves that are one slot, maybe too powerful. I said, so obviously they're going to change it around so that we have a really cool custom variation system. And then they just gave us everything they had and nothing. And that's when I realized they they literally just gave us delayed content, a custom mode that was available day one. They just unlocked it in competitive modes that I said, oh my gosh, they're done with the game. They're done. And then Ed Boone taunting the community on Twitter with perspective, uh, hey, what if we did this? What if we did that? And of course they did nothing. And then I realized yeah. that I realized they're done with the game. They're done. And I started making videos saying, bad news, they're done. This is it. And because this is it, this is, an, uh, this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable that they did this. And I said, I don't want to hear, excuse. every other game is getting an overhaul. Those studios are going through COVID, same as everything else. And of course, the community that was still hopeful at that time looked at it as, here's Tom bashing NRS. And I did a lot of videos on this to cover it. And I even said, you're not going to see MK. Uh, at that time I called it MK12. You're not going to see that until 2024. Look at the numbers. They're going to release it next gen. We're in COVID. There are only 500, uh, there are only like 5,000 PS5s in households. They're not going to release a game until that number changes for next generation. They're a business to make money, not to not make money. And um, I was considered like bashing the game, bashing the game, bashing the game. And then, of course, when they made the announcement, no content, a lot of people were coming out and really hammering them. But the majority of the game, people were trying to keep hope, which is why it sold 15 million copies. When MK11, I mean, MK12 came out, I streamed the beta. I was very positive. You could go back and watch my initial videos. I said it has the potential to be the best MK ever. I gave them high praise for the cameo system during the beta. I gave everything high praise. The game comes out, I noticed... Every beta character is the same except for Sub-Zero. And I'm like, why would they nerf this character? Yeah, they nerfed our boy. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And then I'm was playing the game and I'm like, this is, your, this is like every char character is going to do the same thing. You know? And I'm like, it just, I noticed that it was very watered down to me. Very watered down. Kung Lao cameo everywhere. I'm looking at the Kung Lao character and I'm like, all it is is do whatever armored launcher Goro. I'm like, this game is very watered down. And I'm like, the cameo has all of Kung Lao's moves and the character only has one. I'm like this. And I, I just, I really started to say, this is a very watered down design for this game. And and then I'm looking at the, the, the bare bones content and and some of the skins and I'm like, what are these skins? And even some of the ones they're releasing, I just, I'm like, this is just not a quality product. And then the net code, I'm like, why can I not block a 30 frame overhead consistently? This is, and I, when I see it, I'm like, this is not, 
uh, this is not something that is a quality product. And I, from the very first day, I began going in on the game. And it was just seen as like, I'm a hater and I'll never be pleased with anything. And people just took that narrative and went backwards with it. And some people like Pig are ones who take my legitimate criticism with the game. All my little fun videos about this, you know, I became, I'm crying about the clone. I'm doing this about the clone. I'm doing that about the clone. None of that really happened. People just remember a lot of me and MK, a lot of my stream antics, which was done live for that stream, either to troll them or entertain them. I never put any of that on YouTube for permanent consumption. My YouTube videos were only tech videos about the game, only legitimate criticisms about, you know, some of the things NRS does. And uh, it's kind of like revisionist history. People really look back at some of that stuff as crying and complaining when it really wasn't. And even what I did in MK11 was not complaining. It was, there is a serious problem here. They have watered down the game and it continued in mk uh, mk12 or mk1 as they call it now and i, I just wanted to like switch gears slightly just because i want to get dynasties i want to i want to understand that i've been getting tagged inside all day is there some sort of beef going on between you and sikanda right now uh i wouldn't say it's beef it's just he thinks that i'm hopping on the the train of negativity <laughs> I guess, even though I've been pretty critical about fucking MK11 back when we were doing the hashtag, why did NRS do this again? The the Boone tweet warning everybody that you'd have to pay money for your fan favorites. Yeah, and he he really just thinks that I'm somehow uh, coasting on, I guess, negativity for views. Which again, it goes into the whole you know tom being tossed into oh you're only just complaining for views or you're now you're just being negative it's been a long time coming i feel like if you actually do your research a lot of us have been pretty open and honest with our displeasures and i think he's just misinformed which is kind of unfortunate because i've been critical pre-launch post-launch pre-mk12 mk2 mk1 it's yeah i wouldn't say it's beef it's just i think he's just i don't know taking a piss because he likes the game yeah oh, fair enough yeah i was getting tagged in it all morning um i was just like what the hell is going people kept on tagging me going what is going on because obviously me and sakanda are friends but um i i yeah i didn't know if there was like something deeper going on so far no nah, man I've, I've never even interacted with them directly you know that's i really don't have any issues with anybody honestly outside of like apparently me being a certain type of way based on the content i make but yet Usually that comes from people who, I guess, don't even really watch my content. So I really don't pay no mind to it. What why do you think it is? That, like, maybe Tom could answer this. Like, okay. Why do you think it is in the Mortal Kombat scene in particular? Because obviously, I've, as, I, as I showed in my video, I've floated around all the scenes. I've been involved in Street Fighter and Soul Calibur and Tekken, even Smash Brothers. Why do you think it's in Mortal Kombat that there is a lot of like infighting and a lot of people are go, I, going I, after each other? Because in, in these other games... There are yeah. people that are very critical, like Ma like Main Man, for example, is probably the most prominent Tekken YouTuber, and he's very critical and he doesn't like something. But they're very supportive of his content. People, I don't really see people bashing him, to be honest. But when it happens in Mortal Kombat, it's like everybody's at each other's necks. I, I think it's just it, the current. I think it's yeah, my bad. I think it's just like the current climate of everything. It's like I feel like for me, anyways, it's it's like on my feed, I I either see. I mean, I don't know, is there content to even make for MK1 outside of just playing the game? And at this point, being honest about the lack of content, like, where's the middle ground? And it's not like we don't want to, I mean, me personally, it's not like I don't want to make content doing other stuff, but when things are continuously just getting worse and no one really is talking about it, I can see where they lump you into like a group where it's just extremities, where it's like, you're either for us or against us. When in actuality, it's it's much deeper than that. It's it's not black and white. It's definitely gray. So I think it's just easier for people to kind of just lump you into a label, like you mentioned earlier, like being typecasted. I think that's kind of just like what people subscribe to now because it's so easy to throw the word shill around or, you know what I mean? I think it's just honestly pure laziness almost. I don't know, man. It's a shame because ultimately we, we all want the same thing. That's where all this stems from. We all want this franchise to come back. Like, we're passionate about this because we love Mortal Kombat. 
So I don't know what it is. I think it's just people not able to accept that other people have opinions and they might be different than theirs. I truly don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I'll give you an example. I, I've just seen a comment on one of my videos. I think it's a good comment to read out and I'll pop it in on the video so people can see it. So I'm a guy called STFU, uh, STF Uppercut and he wrote, Pig of the Heart is right in the sense of calling you a grifter. Uh, you are a grifter. You don't play Mortal Kombat. You just cry about it. And your best performing videos are the ones where you cry about Mortal Kombat. Your Tekken 8 gameplay videos get essentially no views compared to that. You can say that you don't play MK because MK1 is not good, but your arguments for fixing it are to call it to call for MK to be 3D again. We didn't have 3D MK in over 13 years. It's not coming back. So nothing you say holds any value whatsoever because what you want from the game is not something other people want. You essentially want to turn the game into Street Fighter versus Tekken. And to that, I would say is one thing I've realized is that obviously I don't expect everybody to go and watch all of our videos because I think we all upload Excellent. quite often. And I, I upload all the time. I try to upload once a day. And I've made loads of videos suggesting what they could do better in like the 2D versions of Mortal Kombat. It's just my personal preference that I like the 3D ones. But I've made loads of uh, suggestions. All of the suggestions I've made don't make it Street Fighter or, or, or um, Tekken. I think people that, again, Tom said before, a lot of these people have only played Mortal Kombat. And so when they hear the word counter hit, they're like, oh, you just want it to be like Tekken. When counter hit is something that exists in everything apart from Mortal Kombat. And a comment like that, that really just tells me that he's probably read a few comments on Twitter and I don't blame him because I don't expect people to use all their time to come and watch my videos, but they'll read a few comments on Twitter, they'll watch one or two videos, they'll look at the most high, highest viewed videos, and then they'll make their assumptions. And I think that's probably what happens with Tom's videos and what happens with maybe some of your content as well, is that people just watch a couple of things and then they make their assessment. Uh, so I, I think Tom, I like my, my bad, Tom, no, my, my bad. I just I think like it's that, funny. Yeah. Then? To piggyback, oh God, we're doing the thing. No, good, good, <laughs> no good. I just want to say, I just want to say, like Tom literally just explained how, like Netherrealm Studios, in spite of how they treat feedback that's valid, they don't listen. So, I know, like, really quick, an example. Lately, um, the round advantage has been there since day one, since day fucking one of MK1. That's been reported. Yet it didn't get fixed until Infinity lost that final round in that set. And people like myself and others went out and had to fucking be vocal about it. So I think it's because we have been vocal because a lot of this stuff we should be because no one else is talking about it. And how else do you get it fixed? I don't know. I guess it's easy to kind of see that and be like, oh, you're just complaining and nitpicking. But it's it's not the case. It's like we're, we're working against the company that doesn't listen. So all we can really do is be as, as critical as we can be to fix things. I don't know. Well, one thing I want to say, and I really don't mean this to sound rude to anyone watching, but if you're stupid enough to think that the only games that I play are the ones that appear on my channel, then I can't help you. I've told people multiple times that I still play the 3D Mortal Kombat, so I still play Mortal Kombat 10. If you go into my most played games on my PS5, MKX is the highest played one. And I think it's, it's a bit baffling to me knowing that these people are also gamers, for them to think that the only games that I play are Tekken and, I guess, Soul Calibur. Or actually, it would only be Tekken and Yakuza at this point to these people, since those are the only two games that I have in the background. But if, you're, if you are dumb enough to think that YouTubers or content creators only upload the games that they're playing, then that is probably why you would make a comment like that. Because I can get, I probably played Mortal Kombat 10 most of, more than most of the people that are making comments on these videos. Yeah, before I get into why they complain so much, because it's a complicated answer, I just want to say for people that talk about Mike Holloway Dynasty, why don't you let it go? Why don't you stop complaining about the game? You have to understand a couple of things. NetherRealm does this to themselves. If NetherRealm would stop outdoing themselves when it comes to botching something, there wouldn't be much to talk about. But for some reason, as bad as it gets, they then one-up themselves in the next patch. Th this patch is a great example. When there wasn't much to talk about, it was just Peacemaker, and Dynasty is uploading Peacemaker videos and Janet Cage stuff. None of this, quote-unquote, hating on the game. Mike Hollow is uploading, hey, my thoughts on the Peacemaker trailer, uh, you know, how will this affect the game? You know, will it have a positive impact? And it was a good video. 
none of this hating. And then they do the combat cast. And then the patch comes out in which they... Uh, so they do crossplay and do it improperly. So again, two of the three... There are weekly... T- the Coliseum is a weekly tournament league. The... Uh, the Tampa Never Sleeps is a weekly tournament league that exclude PC and Xbox because they still can't do a crossplay lobby. And NRS botched up, for lack of better words, crossplay. So, of course, we covered that. And then, okay, well, that's as bad as it gets. No, then it turns out Derek Kurtzik, they say things that, that it wouldn't be a big deal if you didn't say Season of the Huntress, Melina, and they're going to look like punk rock with scars. So you automatically know the situation. You're prepping us. And then you say, and the art team worked really hard and nailed it this time. No, and then we find out their season of chaos. They didn't work at all. You just said, player interest is down. We'll make it a Molina season. People will come back and we'll just put in a Titan boss Molina. Dynasty covers that. This is them shooting themselves in the foot. And because their game doesn't have any content to cover, if you cover Mortal Kombat, you're going to talk about that. It just happens to appear negative because it's not a good look, but they made it not a good look. And then my favorite Dynasty video of all time is him just replaying Tyler Lansdowne over and over and over again saying, and we went ahead and fixed that bug where player two and it's still showing it happen over and (laughs) over and (laughs) over and over and over again. You got Tyler, (laughs) poor Tyler. They put him out there like the Elmer Fudd of NRS. And it, it makes him look like someone that he's not. Because they feed him this stuff to say. And he gets slaughtered off of it when he's just basically, hey, don't forget to say this, right? And yeah. he has no control over it gets done or not. But they make him look like that because he says, oh, we went ahead and fixed that pesky little thing. And then it's not fixed. So when, you, when you're a studio and you do a combat cast... And you say, we changed this, and it still hasn't happened, and people cover it. It's not called being negative about the game. The studio controls some of that. If you do something, make sure it's done before you publicly say something about it. If Harada said, we fixed the plugging, and they patched it, and it was exactly the same, Harada would be massacred for it. Massacred. And not a single Tekken player would say, hey, man. Can you stop bashing the game? That would not happen. They would put 100% of the blame on Harada. And they would say, why would you say this is fixed if it's not? Well, it's no different for NetherRealm. People, for some reason, believe NRS is owed graciousness that no other studio is owed. And then they get on the content creators for, for covering it. And it's like there are certain content creators who will cover everything. Myself and Mike Kahlo had a conversation before the last combat cast, and we said, if they go even 1% in the right direction, we are not going to tear them down. We are instead going to praise them for at least trying to go forward. And they, so we will cover everything, good, bad, indifferent. Then you have other ones who will only cover or put a positive shade on everything and conveniently leave out everything that's that 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 is also goes along with it that doesn't doesn't work properly do you know what i also find quite funny about this whole like grifting conversation that is going on a lot a lot of people are saying there's a lot of people coming out making more combat videos for the sake of hating on it but i don't think anyone's actually stopped to think well if these videos were just of people talking out of their ass and people grifting for views why are the views so high wouldn't that, wouldn't that tell you that there is actually a growing problem with Mortal Kombat, otherwise nobody was watching the videos? If I came out and made 10 videos saying why Tekken 8 sucks, I don't think they'd get any views because I don't think anyone really believes that. I think Tekken 8 has a few issues, but overall I think everyone likes the product. Same with Street Fighter. I don't think anyone will watch them because obviously it's not true. And even if you don't like Tekken very much, you probably can't really say it's a bad product. But I think the reason that these videos are being highly viewed is because there are a lot of people that are pissed off about Mortal Kombat. So it doesn't really, even if, even if, even if we were grifting, even if all three of us were grifting for the sake of viewership, it still makes no sense to say it because people are coming to watch the video. So obviously people are pissed off. They share that sentiment. Otherwise, why would they be watching? 
I, it's not it's like the feedback is is saying, "Hey, you guys are taking it too far. You're wrong." Everyone universally, it's an angry at least mob. based on my comments, yeah, it's an angry mob, and it's not just us. It's literally, it's it's a quote unquote narrative because people are actually feeling a certain type of way. Yeah, yeah. We're not just creating this out of thin air. It's gone you know? away since the end of eleven, and it was like NRS created their own angry mob. Their their mob started to get angry at the end of eleven, and Ed Boon would poke them. Right, which makes them even angrier, uh, which just showed he just was crazy how he just didn't even have a pulse on his own community. And then one came out and shortly after it, people went from high hopes to this is a worse. So MK1 is a better fighting game than MK11, but it is a far worse product overall than MK11. 100%. And, and the fighting game part of it is only better than MK11 because of how bad MK11 was, not how good MK1 was. So you have then you get an angry mob and they're angry. They're like you you didn't you didn't give us what we thought we should have had at the end. You 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 kind of abandoned us at the end of MK11. And then you didn't even try in MK1 and it makes them angry. And what makes them even angrier is and I don't want to use the word shill, but I guess for lack of better words, the shilling, when people are doing these positive light videos, it's not it's not framing the game in a positive light for all to say, oh, this is not true. It just makes them angrier. What you're saying is you're feeling a certain way is wrong, and here's why. When you have an angry mob and you take that approach, it makes them even angrier. And then when other people are saying, hey, you know what? This is how I feel about the game. My Kahlo always says, this is an opinion-based channel. This is my opinion. I'm not saying everyone feels this way, but this is how I feel. They're going to gravitate toward that because they're like, yes, I, this, these people are our voices. And they gravitate to them because they're like, I feel this way. I'm not happy with this. And the angry mob gravitates that way. The answer should not, the question shouldn't be, why does Dynasty or Mike Hollow or Tom or anybody else not shut up? It should be, why is this mob so angry that they are consuming this content so much? Exactly. No, but apparently we could we control the whole narrative. Us three. We are <laughs> Well, I already know <laughs> I, I am considered in, the know? face of Mortal Kombat hate. I know this. I am considered literal the face of Mortal Kombat hate, the man who will never be pleased no matter what they do. But the truth go, is going back to pleased. Pig though. Like going back to Pig, you know, him saying like people like us should be silenced. It's like most normal fuck the video game scene, corporations, any other business would want to hear this type of feedback from die hard fans because we're genuinely concerned. It, again, it's it what other it doesn't make sense, bro. Like I'm at a loss for words every day. When I when I see what I'm seeing and some people again censor everything. Keep a list. It's like, dude, we're literally just trying to be proactive in spite of a company and a publisher that hate their fans. I don't get it. And it's I truly don't get because, it. So what? Do, and I guess I guess we really should hit on this. What Pig is saying is why this game is the way that it is. Because when he says, "I hope they have people's names on a list." Well, Dynasty is living proof that's the case. They have been doing this for a long, long time. Uh, so this is not his suggestion. It is happening. So when you have a world in which, hey, what his pig suggestion is, people should buy the product. If they're not happy, they should shut up about it and then move on. Let's say the next game comes out. Hey, I'm an MK guy. I'll buy this one. Maybe it's better. Oh, it's not good. I paid for it. I'll shut up about it. What happens is you have a world in which the studio can do literally nothing, give you a terrible product, and profit it as if it is the greatest product ever. In the real world, I pig plays guitar. If he bought a guitar he was not pleased with, I promise you he would just not shut up about it and eat his money, right? He would complain about it. Uh, I, I, I guarantee he would be on Twitter saying, I'm not happy with this. If anybody buys this guitar, they should, you know, he'll say, well, you shouldn't make 65 videos about it. But if that guitar company launched a multi-million dollar ad campaign where they were on TV or stream every week, I'm positive you would constantly make a video about it or talk about it, about how they were not doing what they said they were supposed to do or whatever. That is how the world works. A world in which you... 
uh, where a company is tries to silence anyone who criticizes them by blacklisting them for opportunities is a world where that product can never improve. That is why the game never improves. It, Tekken has improved because Harada doesn't blacklist and silence the main man. People, Diablo 4 is a great example. You have their biggest content creators, one of them being Asmongold. Everyone knows who that is. Yeah. This, guy, this guy can crap on the game and they'll say, hey man, it's an honor to have you at Blizzard. They thank them for the content and try to change the game in a positive way. Harada thanks people who have feedback, even if it's not, oh, you're the best, and they want to change the game. Tekken 8 became forged in fire. People voiced why there was a problem with Tag 2, why it wasn't selling well, what needs to be done. And Harada heard this, and, and while people may not like the plugging and the cheating, the actual gameplay of Tekken, I think more people are satisfied with that than not. When you have a world in which you are not, the studio is not welcoming feedback, and even worse, the only people that have their ear are yes men, what happens is you have a studio who puts out a product, then the yes men, you know, shill the game, and then the studio listens to them and what about, and they present this narrative of, look, uh, these people are just hey following a trend, they're hating, and um, you know everything's fine, and the sales numbers back up that everything's fine, <laughs> right? So the problem is That's the, so the analytics say people are buying the game, they are liking the game, and there's just a negative trend of people farming negative views for content. So the analytics on a corporate level back these claims up. So the studio can be immune to this criticism, can silence people who have this criticism. My Kahlo's point is the best one of all. People vote with their wallets. And the only, until people say, we are no longer gonna pay for this, somebody from Warner Brothers would come down and then something would change. But as long as the status quo, if MK1 even sells 10 million copies, why would they change anything? And they have a, mm, system, yeah. and they have a system in place to where, if you want to commentate the games, the biggest people that control some, in Dynasty has a, a fan base of, of over 500,000. It's over half a million people, right? And still, they put it, well, you said something, you're done. No more opportunity for you. So guess what? When people get early copies of the game, that's not going to be Dynasty. They threaten your monetary existence by saying, if you're making money off this, you're done. You, and so if you want to commentate, if you want to continue to be in their good graces and get opportunities, you are physically not allowed to criticize them in any way, shape, or form. And I feel bad for some of these guys. I look at ketchup and mustard. What are their videos? How to kill all the bosses. How yeah. to, how, what's the world? We're back to what is the best and worst in NRS history. Do you know why we're making those videos? Because there's nothing else to talk about. None of those videos existed in MKX, in Justice One. None of those in MK history stuff videos never existed. People, the community was together because they were united with something they love, the game. A, a gaming community is people that are united because they all love the same thing. The love of the game is gone. Even those being quote unquote positive don't love the game. So you got a bunch of people who aren't happy. Some pretend they are, some are not, and that's the community. The reality is more people than you know are not happy, and that's why we have the community we have right now. But NRS... This, this stuff wasn't happening in MKX. I no. was playing MKX in nope. peace. I still had a YouTube channel. It was small. Like, I mean, it's small now, but I was making MK11 criticism videos when it was very small. They were getting a couple hundred views here and there, but I did it because that's what I believed. But I wasn't doing it on MK9 or MKX. I didn't particularly like MK9. I've, I've let people know that, but I think it was a good product and I respect what they put out. It just wasn't for me. I loved MKX. You didn't see, there's nothing on my channel shitting on those games whatsoever and it's only really started with mk11 so for everyone that's like oh you're grifting for views i was like well if this wasn't a sentiment that everyone felt there would be no views so that is really just a moot talking point point. and besides if you were just a grifter people would clock on straight away because you wouldn't really know the ins and outs of mortal kombat there's yeah. nothing in my videos where you can really point to to say that i don't understand the game you might not like some of my points and you might not agree with some of my changes 
but I understand Mortal Kombat very well. So a lot of the people that are saying that are, I don't know, on some level, like I said in my video, that people get very tribalistic over these sort of things. And I acknowledge that because I'm like that with One Piece, even though I don't go on people's videos and comment silliness. When people start talking bad about One Piece, I don't particularly like it. So I get it. It's like that childish thing inside you where you want to defend this thing you grew up with. But I think that as adults, we should probably be able to work out the fact that there is an actual problem here and there's just certain people that are voicing it. I do think there's certain people that are using the situation in the scene right now to cause more problems unnecessarily. But I think it's very easy to look at the difference in the content that we're producing and the content that those people are producing. I'm not particularly going out of my way to go after anyone. The only time I've mentioned people in my videos is really when they've mentioned me. So all of this grifting nonsense is really coming from people that are not paying attention. But I mean, feedback is very important in a game at the end of the day, period. And when people like Pig or anyone else say, they're basically using, when you, they say Dynasty, for example, who, by the way, if you watch any of Dynasty's content, he covers the mistakes they make, but he also covers the characters. You watch yeah, his- Yeah, I, I, talk, I talk positive, you know, I try to, you know, I try to be optimistic and hopeful despite the shortcomings as of late. Like I, I truly do go into every video hoping it's positive like i'll i'll be real it, it's not fun being negative about something you love it's not you know i'll be completely honest pre-launch dude most hyped i've been in so long post-launch so disappointed you know <laughs> but at this point again when you have people like the pig of the hut you know I, you gotta just do it you know you gotta be honest you gotta be vocal and i just it sucks that it's a civil war because again i can say it over and over again beating a dead horse here we all want the same thing we and i hate do. that again it's becoming personal attacks towards certain creators like oh you're only doing this you're only doing that it's like dude come on like check the the track record here like if it's not us home, i want you to realize like <laughs> go watch for example go watch dynasty's video about Peacemaker. I cried, and, bro. And I Cage, cried right? on the revealed fucking trailer. I broke down in tears for how happy I was for a fucking Mortal Kombat game to drop after a Mortal Kombat game. I was in fucking tears, dude. And, That's and, how optimistic I was for the future. But look at your Peacemaker feedback, right? You're, you're, it was very optimistic, right? And because Peacemaker's coming out, Patch is coming out, we're humans. Maybe they get it right. We you know? thrive Maybe. on hope. We thrive. We keep yeah. going on hope, right? Because in reality, we know life can hand you like a lot of stuff. So human beings live on hope. A lot of times we do. Well, you know, that keeps us going in bad situations and bad times, etc. So we're in a bad time. Peacemaker trailers, whatever. Then if you watch his reaction to the the combat cast and the patch notes, it's like. Just the life comes out of your body. The human disappointment of it. Like, you know, it's very hard. By the way, I'm a big Bret Hart guy, Hart guy too. So I was looking forward to that thing. <laughs> stuff, you know, and I'm a Shawn Michaels guy. Uh, Oof. <laughs> Sunny days. <laughs> but you see, though, the, the game, it, it, when you say people are just farming negative views for content, you're basically saying that they don't truly believe what they're saying. They don't believe it. They're just making this for clickbait, for clicks and views. But that would be the same thing as us saying, well, Pig of the Hut, you don't really like the game. And you're a paid yep. shill. You know, you yep. don't really... Now, he would argue to the death, this is how he truly feels. Yet, that, that is not acceptable for us. You know, for me, he'll say, you were always crying about the game, negating 90% of my Mortal Kombat life for the, the, the percent that he wants, and he'll maximize it. But for you two, he'll say basically, well, you know, you don't really, you're, he's basically saying you guys don't really feel this way and you're farming for views. And if people are really positive about the game and that's how they feel, they should be able to voice it without anyone saying you are a paid shill. They don't want to hear that. Likewise, yeah. if we're making video and just the facts alone put the game in a negative light, well, we're not doing that for clickbait. We really believe that there's a problem. And two sides cannot seem to exist. There seems to be like an argument. And there's only that argument because the game is not trending in the right direction. And you just can't have a system in which the people that have the most influence are the ones that have NRS's ear. Like if you were 
a com a pro a series commentator or one of the golden boy content creators handpicked by NRS to say there's a problem here not uncaged game style of there's a problem but this is the most fun I've had in my entire life no 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 if they could actually be honest about it I think more change would happen uh but and, and, the goalpost and, keeps getting moved farther back every time there's a, a complaint or an issue. Yeah, and look, know. I get it. I, I and, and and I do want to. I mean, I guess I want you guys to weigh in on. It can't possibly work when you have a studio that says we are going to silence you for any feedback unless it's positive. They are basically saying if we can improve something, we don't want to hear about it. Yet Tyler Lands then will say, "Hey, go ahead and tweet us anything you want to hear," but he's basically saying. Unless it's something we did wrong. That's exactly what I wanted to talk about. Because again, for people to say we don't come up with solutions, hey, better communication. Community manager, how about you address these issues in real time? In real time, when something comes up, just be open and honest. Hey, thank you. We're aware, guys. We're looking into it. The whole player one advantage, the round fucking issue, the desync issue, they took as long as they could to come out and make statements. And even then, we got confirmation from Thallion, one of the newer community managers, that they can't say anything unless it's quote unquote approved by higher ups and you know their hands are tied. So it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of, um, it's just a lot of like, people are just talking shit, basically. You can see the writing's on the wall. If Harada and Michael Murray can come out and communicate with us, even if I don't necessarily agree with all their decisions, they are communicating constantly with us. So yeah. I don't know who has got Ed Boone in a chokehold, but something is obviously going on at NRS where they're not able to speak, or it's a thing where their game has sold very well. It's reached the market they wanted it to reach, and we're just the 1% and they just don't really care to interact with us, which is fine. You know, if, if all they care about is lining their pockets and they don't really care about their more hardcore player base, they're well within the right to believe that or think like that or operate like that. But that's what it looks like to me. And I think that's what it looks like to a lot of people. But at the same time, even though Thalion said their hands are tied, not everyone's hands are tied because mm -hmm. they do have certain leeway. One of the points Pig of the Hut made on a, uh, was, was trying to make is that there are things going on that people don't know about how short staff they are. And they don't have the staff to do X, Y, or Z. Uh, they don't have the staff to fix the net code or to even make a good net code. COVID impacted them in such a way you don't even have the staff to do that. But of course, they're bound by Warner Brothers to pr produce a product by X time. So if they don't have the staff or things aren't being hired or Warner Brothers doesn't for some reason give them the budget to do the good net code, things like that we can come after Warner Brothers for. Like, you know what? If they are not willing to financially support a product that they're selling, that's on the publisher. We can then say, you know what? NRS, we're not gonna give you a hard time about the net code. We understand the situation you're in. And we understand that they can't publicly throw their publisher under the bus. We get it. Yep. On that, I have no problem. I am not slamming them over the net code. What I'm saying is, but if you, uh, uh, and also they don't have the manpower to make certain changes to the game. This is where I have a problem because if the state of the game is so bad that they can't fix the net code, they can't do cross play all the way because they don't have the personnel, they are not even able to put practice mode into the game even though it's an option that says coming soon, six months later. Um, if they're not able to even do any of these things, or 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 fix the netcode for King of the Hill so it's done properly. So e even for the tournaments they do hold for the PS5, if they can't do any of this, they could at least say, okay, you know what, we are bound, and the dis the distaste is so bad that it is not going to. They could, for one, power up the game so at least in offline tournaments it can succeed and people will want to play it. But even if they even if you know we you know that never happens. And they don't really yeah. have the manpower to, in their in, in, intricate detail, make this super competitive, high-level fighting game by powering everyone up. Okay, then realize the state of your game is right now. After Evo, you're done. Your offline tournaments right now are like 60 people for $10,000. So what you have to say then is, you know what? This is largely going to be a game that is supported online. Let us just focus on 
giving crossplay to King of the Hill and just Omega power everyone up. It's going to be more of a party game. It may not be the most competitive game, but that's going to happen anyway in the offline scene, in the current direction it's going. And at least the people online can enjoy it. That is my criticism. And when you say they don't have the manpower to do that, when they start going in and nerfing things, if you have the manpower to take, you have the manpower to give. That's yep. If they did nothing, if they never touched anything, this logic of they don't have this and it's a Warner Brothers issue, it would make a lot more sense. And we would focus our attention on Warner Brothers and really not bomb NRS for a lot of this stuff. But when you are designing new skins to go into the game, no one at Warner Brothers said, you need to make this skin in paint, Windows Paint. No one at Warner <laughs> Brothers said that. No one gave you that decree. They could have at least spent some time on that, you know? Um, uh, or no one at Warner Brothers is saying, we demand you nerf this character. We demand you take, 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 and ne never give. N or give incrementally in small little bites. No one at Warner Brothers says that. So if they either touched nothing at all, they would have a... A, a larger argument. But if they have the manpower to take, they have the manpower to give. Now, I understand taking is easier than giving, but that just goes back to lazy development. That is part of the problem. Whether people want to admit it or not, if you want to fault Warner Brothers for a lot of that stuff, that's fine. But NRS is still culpable for lazy development. Point blank, period. They are still culpable for lazy development. And... Like I said, if you have the manpower to take, you have the manpower to give. At this point, MK1's only saving grace is netcode's going to be the way it is. Things are going to be the way they are. Power up the game. Make it at least a fun party game. People will compete at it online. And then we can move on to and hopefully the better for the next game. But to what say, about invasions? Come on, Tom. You love invasions. They don't have the manpower, <laughs> quote unquote, right? They don't, they don't have the manpower, right? We would accept it. We would accept, look, and it, people are more accepting than you think, right? People are more accepting than you think. People understand when people's hands are tied. And MK9, despite the garbage that the game had, we understood the game was bound by many, many things. And the technology and the way it was coded it couldn't be undone. But as over the top as the game was, we had fun playing it. So we accepted. And it stood the test of time despite everything. We accepted honestly. these things. Yeah. We accepted it. We understood. Yes. Yes. These things are unacceptable in your game. Absolutely not. But we accept them because we understand they are out of your control. We understand. We understand. MKX had a lot of similar things. And we accepted many, many things. The game came out, the netcode was atrocious. We accepted certain things because we still, at the end of the day, despite all the garbage was in the game, we had fun. So we gave them time and grace period to fix this, 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 better netcode, because we loved the game. We still had fun. In MK, I still like MKX. And so do I, as well as 9, MK. 11 and MK1 especially, we do not give them that grace because at the end of the day, the thing that is in their power to control, they did nothing. But they will continue to take while still, I guess, behind the scenes saying they don't have the manpower to give. So basically, the only people that work there is Krampus. They have the power to give, to take, but not to give, you know? <laughs> and, and ironically, that's a skin in the game, which I guess is more yeah. fitting than anything else. But... I guess I want your take on this. If you have, we we're, we under now that we have a, I just wanted to give the bigger picture that to everyone at home, they don't have the manpower. The net, there are things you have to accept. The net code will always be trash. Crossplay may never come coming. It's coming soon, quote unquote. Don't hold your breath. Online practice probably never coming. Individual character rankings and ranked probably never coming. And all of that is a Warner Brothers thing. That is not the developers who control the gameplay. That is. You know, uh, netcode engineers, things like that. People that can put that type of functionality in the game. That is just apparently they are not willing to pony up the cash to hire the qualified people or enough of the qualified people to do it. Hell, even the artists. 
If you don't want to pony up the dough to put high quality artists on the game, I will even give NRS a pass for that. Ed Boon does not control the budget. He is an employee of Warner Brothers. I will even give them a pass to that and firebomb Warner Brothers for the garbage skins, for the garbage netcode, for all of this. But NRS, just to show we love you guys, the fans who keep coming back to our game, we are going to give you one hell of a fucking fun game. No, that is where we cannot give them a pass. And that is one of our biggest criticisms. They will take, they will take, they will take. They're not stupid. They know to give. They know we want them to give, but they do not. And that I think is, so I just wanted to set the groundwork there for you guys. Like there are certain things that I agree we have to come after Warner Brothers on, but NRS is not without blame. They need to at least give, cut their losses, and at least give us a fun party game to play online. Yeah, I mean, I, I my my thing with the Warner Brothers and NRS thing is that because I can't actually see what is going on behind the scenes, I'm always reluctant to comment on it. I know there's definitely blame that has to be attributed to NRS, and there's blame that's attributed to Warner Brothers, but I don't actually know the extent of it. So a lot of the time in my videos, I just try to cover the things that I can see. I know that there's, I, like I said, I know there's blame on both sides. I just don't know how heavy the blame is on either side. I think it's... Uh, I think it's much easier to blame Warner Brothers because they're the parent company and because they make so many stupid decisions. And um, I think it's I think there's some clear things where you can blame Warner Brothers, but I definitely think that NRS is to blame with when it comes to how they design their characters and how they balance things. <clears throat> I don't really know like what goes into funding, and I don't really know what goes into where they allocate funding. So I I tend to not really look into that just because. I don't really have somebody on the inside that can tell me X from Y. So I, I, I always sit, stay kind of hands off on that, but I don't know if like if Dynasty has a different take. Yeah, I don't really have uh, <laughs> inside information either, but based on what, I mean, at least I've heard it even from, you know, Tom lately, it's it seems like it's kind of just been a long time coming. It's kind of just seems like Netherrealm over the past couple of years has kind of just clocked in and autopilot and... They're content with kind of just getting by, which is unfortunate because, again, this was the franchise that pushed the limit back in the day, and now it's a shell of itself. And, yeah, I mean, truly we don't know. We'll never know unless fucking Boone just decides to resign one day and say, hey, this is what happened. But I doubt that happens. Uh, I don't yeah. know, man. I feel like it's definitely both. But at this point, I think Tom makes a really great point. When you have all sides, casuals, Pro uh, coming out and saying nerf, 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 nerf. And he, I mean, uh, buff, excuse me, bro. I haven't slept, by the way. If you're listening to this, I've been up for like 30 hours. <laughs> I'm drinking my third cup of coffee. I'm tweaking right now. I'm shaking. Uh, <laughs> fucking buff, buff, buff. And all they do is nerf, nerf, nerf. That, again, they're not listening to even people that are quote unquote shills. You know, it's. But I think I think it's oh, also no. maybe fair to point out that, and I don't mean this as a slight. Well, I mean it is a kind of a slight on NRS, but it seems to me that they are not as well versed in balancing fighting games or or taking on feedback as Namco and Capcom are. I can see that when people gave feedback to Harada on like Akuma or Marduk, that feedback was, for the most part, even though it was incredibly difficult to balance Akuma. In Tekken 7, it looked like they were actually listening. And then when we went into Tekken 8, they did listen to some things. I think right now we're in the early stages of Tekken 8. And usually Tekken is on the arcades for two years. And so it goes mm -hmm. through a whole balancing cycle until we finally get on consoles. I think people forget that this is the first Tekken game we're getting straight to console. And it's a very, very difficult game to balance because there's like 100 moves per character and then 30 different systems you need to work out. So right now it feels a little bit messed up. Um, but I do feel like they listen to feedback uh, quite well. And when balance patches do come out, I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. They clearly listen to the problem that we had here. We saw the balance with Dragunov. Um, I don't know what the notation is of the move, but one of his armor crush moves was just way too powerful and had way too much stagger, and they changed it straight away. And it was a good change. Dragunov is still ridiculous, in my opinion. But the change to that was really good. And then when you look at Capcom and what they did from Street Fighter V to Street Fighter VI, it's very clear that they looked at what the community was saying and they understand fighting game mechanics and they applied that Street Fighter VI and you've got a very rich 2D fighting game now. But with NK, what happens is 
I genuinely don't believe they understand how to make a competitive fighting game, which is fine. I don't think they should market it that way because they do with the combat cost, but I don't think they understand. And so when they get criticism, they look at it and they nuke it. They don't make changes. They nuke what people are complaining about and something new comes out of it. And, and in recent times, it's been something worse. They took the criticisms of Mortal Kombat 11 and they exasperated them by not actually looking at the nuances and complexities of what they could apply. And they just either gutted something or they they would uh, just change it in ways that didn't really make sense. So there was minor changes here and there. And it's not to say all the changes in MK1 are bad. I do think MK1 was a step in the right direction, but it was like a baby step. And where they stepped in the right direction, I also think they stepped in mud because they created more problems in you know with other things. So I think it just comes down to the fact that this is not being designed by people that understand fighting games. I also don't think they get people with actual fighting game knowledge into the studio to test the games properly. I know they had ketchup and mustard in there for five days, but from what I understand, they were testing for bugs. It wasn't really balanced changes. Uh, and then obviously we saw what they did with Sub-Zero before the game came out and then after the game came out. So I think they need to get more informed voices. I'm not even like advocating for myself, like people that play fighting games people that play Mortal Kombat to a high level, maybe they should get them in to test their games before they release them. Yeah, let me... So on them balancing the game, that's a whole other thing, that how they do fighting games. They don't understand how to do a few things. Before I get on that, I just want to say one last thing on MK1. For anyone that... Like, I, I... I am probably... I don't care about who the face of Sub-Zero is. I'm an old man. But the face of the Ice Clone, I can tell you right now, I'm probably the first name that comes up when people think Ice Clone. Uh, one of the things, let me just say what I love about Mortal Kombat and why, because I don't want to firebomb Mortal Kombat as a whole. One of the things that MK has always done is they have not followed the trend. You look at Street Fighter. Every other game that came out after Street Fighter that was 2D followed the Street Fighter trend. Even to the point that you'd have a character that has a DP-like move, character that has a fireball. They, every game has to get its Ryu and Ken clones. Uh, Ryu and Ken itself, basically, were almost the exact same character outside of maybe a little bit more throw damage. And, and I think they didn't start to differentiate until later Street Fighter games. Maybe Super Turbo might have been the first time. I don't remember the exact... I, I, I used to remember, but I don't remember exactly... But MK was always different. Even going back to their palette swap, Scorpion and Sub-Zero, they're not Ryu and Ken. They were different. And characters did things differently. Very few characters universally play Mortal Kombat. I mean, the 2D games they did to a certain extent. But as MK began to come into the modern era, they really began to separate their characters and give their personalities to the characters. But even like some of the 2D ones, like UMK3, like Sub-Zero and Scorpion and all the other characters, Liu Kang, etc., Jax, they all were, they were all, their specials made them unique, even though they all had similar normals. In a game like MK9, for example, going to the NRS era, one of the things that I really loved was let's just take my character sub-zero he was quite different the way he went about it wasn't about whether a character was good or bad it was about how a character plays people did not select their character based on can the character at a cat people always want to bring up the casuals well since i am a casual now i will tell you i was very much the same as every pro player now pick a better character all that stuff you know that was me when i competed but in games like MK, even MK9, I played multiple characters. Johnny Cage, Kung Lao, Kenshi, Sub-Zero. I still didn't play one character. As I began to transition to the casual version of me, I went from every character in the game to 10 characters in the game to five characters to one, and now I'm just completely casual. How your character plays, whether or not they're top or bottom, is what gets a casual person into the game. They like something about their character or characters. Not, can the character win or not? A casual does not care if a character can win or not. For me, when I play MK1, when someone says, yo, that, that chameleon in Sub-Zero is an OD team, I don't care about that. I don't care. Because Preach. all you're telling me is Sub-Zero and Chameleon are just as OD as every other character in Chameleon. Well, that's not what I care about. You know, 
because I say, well, what am I doing? Full screen move into katana, fan left. Okay, full screen move into assist. That's every character. Uh, oh, you know, uh, clone push, clone push, clone push. Okay, that's just a generic projectile. Things like ice ball, ice clone, uh, the old days of ice shower, ground puddle, all these cool original things that made him Sub-Zero are gone. Now he's not Sub-Zero. He's just character that becomes good by playing Chameleon. Scorpion is character becomes good when by playing by the... Every character in the game doesn't have their soul. They're just character that is either good and becomes better with this, generic character that is good or not that good and becomes good with this. That is the whole game. It's no longer they are who they are. They're just, oh yeah, good character that does this, not so good character that can be good if they do this. Now they are really good. That's MK1. It's like a bunch of blank faces, blank characters that just are whatever. And it, the life of what made Mortal Kombat Mortal Kombat is, is not there. And for you younger players who say, oh, I enjoy the game. Look, if the world ended tomorrow and humanity restarted itself, you would know that you'd love to read because there were no books. I mean, it doesn't mean you wouldn't love it. You don't know that it's there because you've never had it. And you're not understanding people that have. And I've had all of it from the very first one, every patch. I am by far the, the longest competitive player in MK history, the only one who's played them all in their respective eras and never left, even though I am now casual, no longer competitive. That is well, what one changes. thing I want to say with regards to that is that um, I don't what I don't understand about the community right now is and, and this applies to all areas of life. I've never really got if you are happy doing something, why does the opinions of people that are mm -hmm. not happy with it mean that you're not going to have a bad time? Like I've seen people getting really irate like, about people being negative about the game or critiquing it or shitting on it. And I'm just like. If people started cussing out my favorite games, like my, everyone knows my favorite single player game is Yakuza. If I if I came online, I saw everybody ripping into it. I might make a video pointing out that why it's positive, but I'm certainly not going to be over in people's videos saying stop talking about it, move on, this that, and the other. Why don't you just play the game and shut up? Like if that's the case, if you don't want to talk about it and you don't want to have a back and forth about it and you don't even want to hear about it, there's over 80 million accounts on YouTube. What are you doing over here? That's what I don't. That's what I'm not understanding. I want to ask you guys this too because I don't know. Um, it's kind of killed my vibe with the way that things have played out with MK1. I feel like you know, obviously, every season we get a quote-unquote balance patch. Hmm. Um, like the rotating meta, man. It's just exactly what Tom was saying. It's it's getting kind of tiresome because everybody just selects quote-unquote what works. It's it's fucking boring, man. I don't know. It's just, just it's really hard to you enjoy. just, you know, when you don't love it, you only go with what works. You know? It's so it, it sucks, man. It's it's really you don't I don't put understand how style on it. Right. Because you're like, well, yeah, I can't put my individual touch on it. What works right now? Uh, it didn't always used to be that way. And, and now it, it kind of is. And um, it's weird, man. Mike Hollow made a point, And I don't know why I've never touched on this or really showed about it. So NetherRealm Studios. Midway, whatever it is, if you look at if you look at other games, Street Fighter has a long history of building, not rebuilding, right? Tekken, although it went through a rebuild, was continuously building, right? They were always moving forward. They never actually went through a rebuild. The game changed and their scene was built up, but they've never really been rebuilt. They, you know, they were just, they've been building, building, building. They've had ups and downs, but they've always been building. And then they found the right thing, and then they really exploded. Mortal Kombat, it's right there in front of their face. MK1, 2, and 3. Build, build, build. And the 2D communities, they, they love their games. Yeah. When they went MK4 and then 3D, the 2D community stopped. Why? Because you had to rebuild your community. They didn't like those games, right? It wasn't Mortal Kombat. To them, right? Street Fighter is still Street Fighter. Street Fighter 6 may be different in a, a billion new systems and everything from Street Fighter, but it is still Street Fighter. It still has a, you know... Um, yeah, the essence of it is still there. In the 3D yeah. games, MK Deception is not unlike MK Deadly Alliance, right? They were able to keep... When you keep a model, 
if people, if you were to th- say to anyone that's always stuck with Mortal Kombat and say, right now, most content-packed Mortal Kombat game, they would say probably Deception. Because they think mm-hmm. of contest, Conquest Mode, Chess, Puzzle, all these things that came along with that game, the overall ambiance of the game, everything. This is only possible when you keep your foundation. MK2 and 3 were possible because they kept the foundation. MK Deception and Armageddon, the content they were able to add was possible because they kept the foundation. Even Mortal Kombat 9 was possible because they kept a foundation of MKDC. And they made it 2D, kept a similar metered system, only expanded on it, took pro moves and expanded on it with EX moves, right? and then added a super. They expanded on what they had. And then they started rebuilding. And then the problem is, when you rebuilt from the 2D era to the 3D era, you rebuilt your whole scene, you lost all of your arcade followers. When you rebuilt from the 3D era to Mortal Kombat 9, you still lost a good amount of people, but you were building. And then when you went from 9, I don't even want to count Injustice here because that's that's a different issue altogether from Netherrealm. You know, and I, I, you know what? Well, screw it. We might as well weigh in on it at some point too. Well, we have everybody here. But they're constantly rebuilding and rebuilding. You can't have a scene when you're always a rebuild. From one game to the next is a rebuild, is a rebuild, is a rebuild. Not only, and you notice as they rebuilt, the content became more and more scarce. Word. Yeah. Um, MKX, they kind of hit lightning in a bottle. They caught it twice with nine, and then they rebuilt with X. And X, while it was a lot different, it was still ideas that were still fun and good, and people got behind them. Once they kept rebuilding, they just ran out of good ideas. And then it was, they ran out of good ideas. Then Warner Brothers was putting less funding in and they were putting less whatever. And there are just, it was just a perfect storm of bad ideas with not as much, uh, with, with, we're trying to be too safe with how characters are. With now, they don't have the manpower to change XYZ with everything else in the game. So this is how we ended up where we are. So the formulas, they can look at the analytics and say, you know, people that were here, we changed, they didn't like it, we lost a lot of people. But they were able to still do a two or three game cycle. This game, we can't build a scene in community because they are restarting the community every single time. Every time you make a new game and you restart it, not only is it very difficult for you in the window you have to, to put what you want into a game and make it a good feature rich game, you are also then taking people from the old game and losing them while now not gaining as many new people as you thought. You are obtaining but not retaining. That is why the scene cannot grow. That is why the scene cannot build. That is a huge issue for Mortal Kombat. And there are some people, like my old co-host Crimson Shadow, who said, why can't we be like Smash? Look at what they did. Because the community is not built that way. With Mortal Kombat 9 was huge. And when Injustice came out for the first Evo of Injustice, Mortal Kombat 9 was still there. It had three Evos. Only NRS came to make three appearances. And they were both being played simultaneously. And the MK community was growing. If you came into the NRS scene, if you liked Injustice, you had Injustice. If you liked Mortal Kombat, you had MK9. And you could play them both simultaneously. But then something happened. It became, everybody move over to Injustice. And if you are stuck playing Mortal Kombat, you're a loser. So the MK growth stopped immediately. And then the Injustice growth started. Well, not only did they restart Mortal Kombat... But the game didn't grow for two years. So you stopped its growth, then restarted it with MKX, which still turned off a lot of MK9 players. And you have a community of Injustice players where now you stopped Injustice's growth. And they don't have anything to play for two years. So they're gone. And then you put Injustice 2, and the MKX players don't have anything to play for two years because you're... Even when Ninja Killer came back around, the community assaulted him. He's a necro. He's a loser. Never traveled. Once he was good in MK11, yeah, we know he was good in that game. But at first, the reaction was negative. So the community is not... It was built poorly. It was this this, in, this instant gratification. They didn't realize how to build because the MK community never had to build. When MK9 came out, it was gifted a spot in the tournament scene. They had to build nothing. All they had to do is maintain something that was gifted them. So they don't know how to do that. And it's really hurting now because right now we don't have a scene. We don't have, where's Injustice? It's not being played at all. 
Uh, yeah. and, and, and when the next Injustice comes out, what happens to Mortal Kombat? It just stops. And then the next game comes out, has to rebuild it, and Injustice will stop after that. Players right now can't even go back to when people say, what about Smash? Do what they do. We don't even have the power to go back and say, let's bring out MKX. Because if anyone tried to do that, for example, let's say I said, you know what? I'm going to take the plunge. I'm going to go all MKX. I'm going to stream it. I'm going to try to organize events. People like Pig or others would firebomb me. I'm stuck living in the past. I can't cut it in the new era. Nobody wants to have those things associated with them, right? You know, oh, he's, he's not doing this to be a community guy. He's doing this because he can't compete in today's game. So he has to go back to something he was good at. And that's just not me. Anyone that does that will be seen in that light. So the scene can't even heal itself and build in a game they do want to play. So yeah, the, the MK scene is screwed. Yeah. It's screwed. It's, yeah. There's so much. It's a combination of everything that happened with Warner Brothers combined with all the years of poor scene building and negativity and toxicity and hatred of the scene within itself. And it's all hitting at the exact same time. That is why everything's so bad. It's a combination of the scene, the game, NetherRealm, Warner Brothers. It's just all hitting simultaneously. And that's the problem. People could say, hey, go back to playing what you love. But if you go back to playing what you love in the NRS scene, if it's not the current game, you are a loser. And everything negative about you will be associated with you. So the, the scene can't even help itself. It's like Third Strike players, they're going to Evo. Yep. If Evo did that to MK, it would never do it to MKX because the community would eat itself. It's just... Do you, you reckon know? there'll be a lot of infighting if they did it for MKX? So here's the problem here. I think what should happen right now, I wouldn't go back to MK9 because there's no GGPO. It's not playable online. Something accessible on your mod. One, things have to be accessible, right? So the modern player has to be able to play it on his console. Um, I think what the community should do is hold both MKX and MK1 tournaments hand in hand at every single major. And if you, even if you don't like MKX, you can play it and you have MK1 to compete in. Even if you don't like MK1, you can play MKX and play MK1 for quote unquote fun. But there's yeah. no longer this hatred in the community. The, the hatred where we all hate each other and none of this, well, I'm better because I'm an MKX player. I'm better because I'm an MK1 player and you're a loser. No, you're a scrub. None of that. You've, that shit has got to stop right now. And anyone that does that, p the community needs to kindly tell them to shut the fuck up. You, the power of a million people telling somebody to shut the fuck up is immeasurable. Um, and I, I've, I've always said the community can then police itself, can grow itself and build itself. And NRS can see from examples, people do like some of the nuances that we're adding to the new game. But they also like some of the stuff to the, from the older games. And they can kind of get the message that way. The community can heal together. Everybody wins. Right now, everybody is losing. You're an MK1 player, you're losing. If you like the other MK games, you're <laughs> losing. And this scene overall is losing. Even NRS is losing because they're getting firebombed. The only person winning right now is Warner Brothers. You know? The little model of corrupt, bureaucratic, multi-millionaire, billionaires profiting while everything under them is dying. And they're the ones who are really the ones winning here. The scene first needs to have itself to get a win. So if you like MKX, stream it, play it, tournament organizers, I urge you to hold it. If you like MK11, stream it, play it, and with the two scenes combined, we can build a Mortal Kombat scene in general. You don't have to worship MK1, but you can still support that scene. You don't have to like or worship MKX. You can support the scene. And the Mortal Kombat scene as a whole grows. What this also does is if Injustice 3 is the next game, the MK scene does not cease. It continues to grow so that when the next Mortal Kombat game comes out, it comes to a massive community, not an injustice community now being forced to move over to Mortal Kombat. And then we can follow that trend with injustice and grow two communities side by side and have a massive nether realm community. The answer is not to eat each other. 
It is to work together so that everybody wins and everybody's happy, but most of all, Mortal Kombat wins. Put your fucking goddamn ego aside. I get it. If I wasn't playing MK1, I could play MKX. Fine. Who fucking cares? You're playing MK1 and join. Do not crap on people you think could do XYZ in MKX or vice versa. If you chose to go to MKX, do not crap while well, you're only winning in MK1 because Sonic Fox wasn't there. Everyone, shut the fuck up. Put your ego aside and realize that this, what we're doing right now, is bigger than all of you individually. It's about the game. It's about the community. That is my only answer right now. Do you you think that uh, are tournament organizers allowed to do that? Or do they have to seek permission from, if they're a bigger tournament, do they have to get permission from NRS to play their game? No. So if you are maybe Evo, I don't know about Evo, but I know... I don't think it would be a problem. Uh, I think if you are uh, like NEC, Combo Breaker, CEO, they can hold whatever game they want. So I don't think they have to. They're not seeking a pot bonus of anything of anything at all. So they can, they can do that. Um, maybe Evo would have to. I think if a pro league did it, like I know when Maximilian did Twitch Rivals, I think they needed the permission to do MKX. Um... And keep in mind, they did Twitch Rivals was done during MK11, and they chose to use MKX instead of MK11, which really speaks. Uh, speaks and think yep. how many people spoke out. Justin Wong was like, I love this game. Yep. Right? Yep. Justin, Wong, Justin Wong was like, I love this game. By the way, also speaking to the toxicity in Mortal Kombat and this, if you don't like our game, leave it. Only Mortal Kombat has done that. Like, Pick of the Hut is basically saying, if you don't like MK1, go fuck yourself, leave and be blacklisted. In Tekken, if you don't like Tekken, you know what they say? Well, why? It's yeah. not... In MK9, when Justin Wong played, he would go to tournaments and they would boo him and say, go back to Street Fighter, get the fuck off of our game. Why would you not want someone <laughs> like that playing? Insane. Why would you treat them that way, right? He doesn't treat anyone else the same way. The other scenes are so ingratiating to MK players. And MK players are like, you know... Uh, you know, if someone like Punk, for example, were to say, yeah, I think I'm going to beat someone in MK, you know what we say? Put him against Sonic Fox. But if Sonic yeah. Fox says, I think Zafina can win, we don't say, put him up against me right now because we know the result, right? We don't want to do that. But we will oftentimes take a new player to MK who is established in another scene. We want to humiliate him, embarrass him. Sonic Fox is playing Waka Flocka blindfolded. Why? What's the point of that? To humiliate him, I want to see Sonic Fox play me, right? We don't want to see that. We are just built on toxicity and negativity, and that's all we are. How can we possibly succeed? So tournament organizers, to go back to your point, can do anything they want to do outside of Evo and a pro league. I think it's time to to build the Mortal Kombat scene and no more of this negativity and who's a necro and leave our game and don't come back and you're only good because of this. All that shit that we have done for years, gone, done, yeah. drop it because we are if all losing. If there is ever a time, honestly, Tom, yeah. honestly, like if, there, we are if there's ever a losing. time. We are yeah. all losing. Do you understand? I My first ever Mortal Kombat 2 tournament in 1992 for tokens had 80 people at it. A pro series tournament for $10,000 in South America. One of the most MK rich. They love, love Mortal Kombat there. Love Mortal Kombat. They bleed it. Had 66 people for $10,000. We are in a serious, serious, serious uh, uh, troubling times. So... Right now, I think, and I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I think that's what needs to be done. I think the community as a whole needs a win. And, I, you know, we need to focus also our attention in the future on, as we're building our scene, let Warner Brothers know we are not satisfied with the effort they are putting in to sell us this product. While also letting NetherRealm know we understand We are no longer going to firebomb the shit out of you for things we now understand are are not in your control. But we are also going to hold you accountable for what is in. The gameplay that we find is fun. So we got it. There are certain things you can't control, but you can control how the gameplay is. Give us fun gameplay 
we will firebomb Warner Brothers for what we what they are, what they are control have control over. We will voice our concerns to them. We will be critique your gameplay. We won't throw you under the bus for stuff you have no control over. And we will build our scene simultaneously. This restores love between community, game, developer. And while they can't go after the publisher, we can. But we need that kind of triangle where we're all on each other's side, right? And it's kind of like, that's what we don't have. That's what we don't have right now. We need to get back to that. Yeah. I, I mean, I, there's always, I, I think there's going to be more blow ups until things calm down. Um, I was I, I was literally having a conversation with uh, Ketchup the other day, and they was like, "This is sort of like one of the mill stuff with Mortal Kombat, unfortunately." And I know that there's like I I've always been like very clear in saying that I don't mind and I have no issue with people enjoying Mortal Kombat One at all. And if they want to play it and they're happy, that's more power to them. We hope they play. It. They, I, they spent their money on it. We want them to enjoy it. Yeah, if you if you like, unfortunately for me, I bought the premium collector's edition. Same. It's catching dust right now, and I obviously would like to have my money back. Obviously, it's my fault for trusting them again. But if you're genuinely having a good time in Mortal Kombat, then my videos are not for you. You know, go about your business, do your thing. I'm not going to come to your channel and bother you with something like True Underdog Gaming, for example. He made a video where he was outright lying about things, and so I think. Because he's got a big subscriber base, it's good for people to point it out and let people know this isn't what the actual, this isn't the facts. But that's not to say he can't have a good time in Mortal Kombat 1. If he's having a good time, have a good time. At no point in any of these rants or any of these critiques of any any of us said that you shouldn't be having a good time in Mortal Kombat 1. It's just our opinions based on what we've seen with the community, the people working at NRS and how Mortal Kombat 1 plays out. And uh, if you feel a certain type of way about that and you feel if you feel personally attacked because I'm critiquing a game, then I don't really know what to say to you. That says more about you than me, in my opinion. At the end of the day, we love the same thing, guys. And if you think us being critical is somehow going to ruin your experience, I don't know what to say other than I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm going to be honest, like we've all been honest. And it's truly coming from a place of, you know, we, we truly do want this to be better. You know, I don't enjoy getting in front of the camera and face palming for 20 minutes, trying to find a way to explain how Netherrealm isn't responsible, but WB is. It, it's not fun. And I think Tom pretty much hit the nail on the head perfectly. If there was ever a time for us to come together, this is it. I said that before say it again we should probably be working together because ultimately we have the same goal it's just disheartening to know that being honest all three of us results in offending certain people and obviously pick of the hut making statements and stuff it's it's a shame because it does no use it really it, doesn't it does. do anything and i feel for content creators who have no content so like rio was the first one to start the best x and worst x in nrs history x. and that <laughs> there was nothing else to talk about so your underdog stole it i don't want to say stole it because every idea is taken from somewhere so i hate when people say stole it you know i don't like how your underdog secretly roasted me in one of his no sub-zero and then as soon as i he had that vortex uh when they off the freeze time he made a video about hey look what he can do now i do find that that's a little you know but again everything is taken from somewhere and there is no such thing as uh, uh, almost no such thing as a truly original idea it always genuates from some some or it's a culmination of ideas from multiple people to equal one idea but i feel bad for them because they can't make tech videos because it doesn't exist. They can't ma make matchup videos because I feel like matchups are more bland and more one dimensional. I think matchups are the least relevant they've ever been in Mortal Kombat yep. history. Yep, 100%. So you, so you can't make matchup videos. If we were to go back, think about how many people have never seen or played some of the the MKX or something like that. Man, pre MKXL was so fun. Right. So, I missed that. <laughs> so. Think about all the tech videos you could make for games like that. You can't make it for this game. Making the best and worst in NRS history, it, it, it does nobody good. And to be honest with you, 
if we were to bring back MKX and have MKX and MK1 in unison, all your content, content creators out there would be much larger because people wouldn't have to hear for the millionth time what's the best or worst X in MK history. You would be introducing them to a game that they can play on the PS5. You would be introducing them in how to play said game on the PS5, and they would probably enjoy it. And if they don't, there's always MK1. You know, so everybody wins. We go back to building the scene, building the game. Obviously, we'll still cover MK1 as NRS changes the game, as NRS patches the game. I would actually still play it. I would play it to support the scene because it's about growing the MK scene, not just one particular game or about one man's ego to, oh, I'm better than you because this game or that game is better or this game's worse. Put all that aside. I think everybody wins. I feel My heart goes out to content creators who even have to pretend like I'm watching some of the reactions when Peacemaker drops and I'm going, that's not the real reaction. You know, like, you know, like I don't believe it. You know, it's not it's not believable for anybody. When Molina dropped an MK11, even though it was MK11, I believed it because there are a lot of people who love the character, right? And people were hoping the game would get better. In uh, in reaction videos and like MKX, I believed it because I generally felt people were excited. The characters not only were iconic, but they felt iconic and they played iconic. Once that feel is gone, it kind of just diminishes all the hype, even for a deal. Homelander, we, home, we know Homelander's DLC. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I've never, Omni-Man is in the game. Nobody cares. I have yeah. never, I have never seen characters. They could put Goku in this game and it would be a travesty. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad they didn't because it would be a travesty. A travesty to put uh, 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 to put something like that in the game. That's how I feel about Spawn. Honestly, I'm glad we. Had, I guess we got Spawn and MK11. I guess of all things, that was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like I feel bad for the content creators who don't even shill the game, but they don't critique it, and they're just stuck with clickbait videos or best or worst version of X in MK history, and. Man, NRS, you really put them in a bad spot. How do you guys feel about... Uh, I saw some people being really critical of uh, Uncaged Games because he made a video recently critiquing Mortal Kombat. And uh, I heard uh, I heard some... I can't remember who it was. I don't know if they were on Twitter, but they were saying something like, he's allowed to speak about it now. But I don't really, I wouldn't really understand the logic there. Why would NRS allow you to speak about it now? They just wouldn't want you to shit on their game, period. So maybe... I don't know what you guys think. Do you think that he is... I don't think he's trying to show for views because he already gets a lot of views per month anyway. But a lot of people are like attacking him because he's now speaking out on the game. I, I don't know how you guys feel about him speaking out about six months later. I think he probably genuinely is disappointed if you look at his content. He's definitely not posting as many gameplay-oriented videos as he used to. Um, yeah. And it's not just him. I watched a really good video from History Behind the Warrior the other day. Oh, I uh, saw that, yeah. It was a good breakdown, right? He he pretty much hit the nail on the coffin and really just summarized a lot of the stuff we've all been talking about for the past few months. I think, really, people are just, I guess, finally realizing that, well, the game's empty. The game kind of is what it is at this point. Corner Poke Simulator 9000. Um, yeah. I don't <laughs> invasions think I, being redundant, that, you know. That was a tough I, video for me to make, man. <laughs> yeah, it's fuck, man. Like, I, I feel like is the hate warranted? No, I don't think so. I, just like I don't think it's warranted for us. Um, I wish he would have spoke out sooner. Um, but it kind of is what it is, I guess. Sometimes it does take people a little longer to really like manifest their opinions. Because I remember in week one of Mortal Kombat One, I was actually very positive on the game. But I think that was largely because I was so I hated MK11 so much that anything they gave me was going to be better. Yeah. And sometimes I think what fighting game was it? I can't remember what it was. I think it might have been Smash Brothers. I was very I used to be very big on Smash Brothers, and it took me a long time because I I started playing Melee, but I really got into it in Brawl, and then I went back to Melee and I played it for a long time. And I didn't obviously record this because I wasn't doing YouTube back then. But it took me a long time to become a bit more critical of bro and uh if i did that on youtube now i would be called a shill or that my handlers are letting me do it or whatever but yeah. 
I don't really I don't really sit with that rhetoric because it makes it seem like it makes it seem like the people that were saying it before, you're just trying to bandwagon them now. But sometimes people take a little while to catch on or they're like, I've given this my best shot because I did that of MK11. If you go back on my channel, it took me a year before I started really critiquing it because I loved MKX so much. I was, I was riding a high coming into MK11 thinking, yeah, this is going to be amazing. It's going to be even better. And it didn't really sink in until a year later. So I don't actually agree with all the people that are attacking the content creators that are coming out and saying it now. Especially because a lot of them are quite big, so I don't think they need to be attacking Mortal Kombat. It doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, if we play into the narrative, why would they need the views, right? Yeah, exactly. It always comes down to views. It always comes down to some people feel like they're a messiah and they're holier than thou. And I said it on this date first, and now you guys are just copying me. But sometimes people just take a little longer to catch on. I don't know what he means by if is he allowed, though. Um well, I'll be more specific. So I got a couple of clips sent over to me from uh, from uh, one of Fate's streams because he did a stream and he started like rip he started going after me, and I think it was like two and a half hours long. So I didn't uh, bother watching it. But some you guys of my are best Discord... friends are here. Oh yeah, we love each other. <laughs> but he he made a he made some comments uh, and he was talking about how he had said everything before the game had come out and now people are only saying it now and that's like his big talking point as if he like is you know he's holier than thou or something and i think there's some people that carry that sentiment and one of his talking points was that his handlers or these people's handlers are letting them talk now and i don't know what that means i don't know what he's referring to i was trying to understand it you know because obviously i don't like the guy i think he's an idiot but I was trying to understand where he was coming from when he was saying they're handlers. But as far as I'm aware, if you are on payroll from a company, they wouldn't want you to talk shit about them, period. Not on day one or month six. So when he says their handlers are letting them do it, I don't actually know what he's talking about. I don't know if you guys had something to weigh in on that. No, I've, I've never heard of that. And I don't think that there's any evidence to support that he has handlers that tell him when he can and cannot talk i didn't have a handler i wish i did fuck maybe it would have been more direct <laughs> yeah, to know maybe, what the fuck i did wrong maybe he'd be allowed back <laughs> no i i do think um you know and i i, I guess just something i did want to tackle as well i have you all here one of pig's points has always been and he's made this to me many times in private that and we hear this a lot, Warner Brothers doesn't care, even about the casual. They only care about the sales. Once the game has sold, they don't care about your opinion. So if your tournament scene dies, they don't care. And if you lose a lot of your casual viewer, ba viewer base and you're a lot of your casual online players and competitive players, they don't care. The game sold. I understand that because they are a corporation. They are out of our reach they don't associate with us they're not the developer but shouldn't netherrealm care right i mean that's what i don't get i guess shouldn't they care and shouldn't they say there's only one thing within our control how the game plays we know what our community wants so we're going to give it to them that is where i get confused so i i do agree on pig's point like any corporate thing they only care about the bottom line but the developer itself, you would think, would have a little bit more pride and say, we can't yeah. give you this. We can't give you that. But we can give you gameplay that you find fun. And yet they seem I, to be worried about people complaining about broken characters more so than giving us fun mm -hmm. gameplay. I just don't know why Boone hasn't been as active as he used to be. I remember back in the MKX days, MK11 days, Boone was always active. Always. He's been pretty much MIA lately and again in comparison to a Harada it sucks because you hold both in that same standard right it always felt like you know Boone gives a fuck about us so I just wish again communication anything it's all we're asking for so we can have the answers to these questions who's the blame do you well, I mean man. if if uh, if WB are actually holding their hands and saying you can't talk then I suppose there is nothing Boone can do if, yeah. if if it is the case where they're like you're not going because I I've worked in companies before where they're like do not put that shit online and there's nothing you can do you know otherwise you lose your job yeah, so yeah. 
if if the, if that's the case, that's why like although it's very annoying to have community managers and people that used to interact with us, I try to stay away from that a little bit because I've worked in big corporations where they do some really stupid shit, and you just can't make any mention of it. Even even if you don't sign an NDA, you just if you speak, you know you're done. So I, whilst I'm annoyed at Mortal Kombat NRS, if they can't speak because of WB, then you know, I, I don't I don't blame them for that. It's definitely just more prominent than ever. You know what I mean? Like, it's no comparison. So I think that's something a lot of us got to also keep in mind. But again, we don't know. I do think it's interesting how we were data mining things back in like MK11, Justice 2. And the same thing happens still to this day. So again, tinfoil hat theory. I almost feel like Netherrealm wants to self-sabotage, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, man. I truly don't know what they're after. Yeah, well, Ed Boon's also I, been... A, I, sometimes I also think they subscribe still to the arcade mindset. And you just can't keep secrets like that anymore. You just... There's yeah. no such thing as a game that gets released on PC where you're going to have secrets. It's just... The world is, is a different place. And Ed Boon... I mean, like... It, also, you've got to realize when you make subtle hits on Twitter, people are, are fiending for some type of big change. But when you make those comments on something like Twitter, people are going to say, oh, I wonder if he means this. And that's where people are going to go. Yeah. And ultimately, it just hurts the product. It doesn't deliver. Yeah. So. It ultimately, just yeah. hurts the product. I agree 100%. And I just think that I think either thing in the next game, if things don't change, at least from what's in within the control of Netherrealm, I get it. There may not be a lot of money in the Pro Series. NetherRealm, give us a game that we can get behind, and we will find a way to get our game in a Pro League. We've done it before. We'll do it again. But give us something that we can work with. Um, and I, if they do not, and the game turns out the same way gameplay-wise, and it turns out the same way content-wise... I think it's time to say Mike Hollow was right. And sometimes people just, they lose it. And it's time for the game to be sold and maybe someone else should take it. And I hate to say that because I do know a lot of those guys there and I don't want, um, I mean, to me, I, I wouldn't even want that because I, I yeah. would never call for someone to lose a job. So I think- And again, I don't think any of us have ever even implied that should happen either <laughs> so it's no what i'm saying yeah. nether realm should be sold yeah for sure with mortal Kombat, but whoever come else has it could then say their alt they're obviously going to come in and say okay boone you're good run creative buddy. director you know but, or you know. still keep boone <laughs> there uh, someone who can who someone who has more resources to give because it seems right now warner brothers doesn't have or they're not willing to, with their financial stuff going on, you know, do certain things with NetherRealm. If they were to sell NetherRealm and Mortal Kombat off to someone else, maybe that company could say, you know, we are willing to restructure certain things, allocate more funds to you. Uh, and they might say, Ed Boon, you are, you are the Queen of England. You really don't make any laws or anything like that, but you're definitely there for the press. You are there as the the press guy figured you're going to go to the conferences. Yep. You are Ed Boon, Mortal Kombat. They might do things like, say, let's bring back in John Tobias for the story so that we can stop having multiverse stuff for, for the, you know. Uh, the, some continuity, yeah, finally. Yeah. Some <laughs> continuity, finally. Uh, then the, so that they can... Uh, not you know use the the infinity gauntlet and snap Hanzo Hisashi out of out of existence, but and then you know, maybe you know, maybe, maybe bring in a new creative director that has a more touch on things right as this is the direction the game was going to go, and maybe they will get back to being Mortal Kombat and a lot more. I've but, got a different stance on this than you two. Um, I and I don't mean to sound harsh at all. But there's no point in me lying either. I don't care who works there. And I don't care who gets employed there. I just want it to be a good game. I appreciate everything that they have done in the past. But my my concern and my only real goal here is to get the best Mortal Kombat game in people's hands. So if I'm being 100% real with you guys, I couldn't give less of a shit who is working there. The, the thing that I am 
I, I think the thing I care about the most is in all of this is Sweet Baby Ink and not having any of those people anywhere near it, whether that cost them their jobs or, or what. They, to me, they're hell bent on destroying Western games, and I think their influence is clear in Mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm keeping it a hundred of you guys, I, if they lost their jobs, I ain't losing any sleep over it. As for the guys that work at NRS, I don't care if they keep their jobs. I don't care if they get replaced. I just care that we get the best Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat game possible. I couldn't care less the gender, the race, the person, what their political views are. I just want them to produce a good game. You know, thinking about WB and how they handle fighting games, if you just look at recently player first games and how they've been handling multiverses, Tony, the director there, he is constantly replying to people on Twitter. Like there were times I was seeing him doing like 50 replies in a day, just to request questions. I feel like, again, asking for somebody who has a better pulse on the community, that's clearly possible when you have a new studio a small studio doing that yeah. why can't a game like mortal kombat have the same treatment so again big bad wb yet multiverses hey it seems to finally be doing pretty decent it's coming back see how that goes i don't know yeah i think one thing they need to realize just looking at other games like hell divers for example Great having game. yeah having uh communication with your community is so key to building something special and i feel like that that community feels that they're being communicated with we're getting updates on that game regularly the way they're treating the community as well the way they're keeping politics out of things the way they're um, updating the game all of that is adding to making it like a much more richer experience like i play hell divers every day like i, I, can't, um, I can't get enough of it it's, it's such um, a good game and even with tekken whilst i don't agree with all of their decisions I know that if I say something, it might not get viewed, but I know there's a much, much higher chance of somebody there paying attention because they seem more tuned in with the community. They seem like they actually care. Whether that's because they think it will affect their bottom dollar or not, personally, I don't really care as long as I'm getting the communication. But with Mortal Kombat and with, with uh, Warner Brothers, when I think of them now, I think of somebody in a black tie and a suit with no face that I can't communicate with. They're just... Uh, like a money hungry machine that is going to keep on pumping out bullshit costumes and half half broken characters until the game has basically gone past its sell by date and then we'll get Mortal Kombat 13 or whatever they're going to call it. Yeah, and probably like five more Mortal Kombat mobile games that no one's going to play. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just that is like, what it is. It's ridiculous. They don't even have. By the way, what is the combat shrine supposed to be? What's the rumor on that in the data mining? I have the, no idea. The what? The combat shrine that we're still. Oh, at. I don't even think we even know yet, right? Yeah, I don't think it's even been talked about. I think the rumor is apparently it might be ways to get previous combat league skins without paying the premium uh, dragon crystals. That's kind of what we're thinking. <laughs> well, you know, again, just to put on, you know, why we are so negative, quote unquote, when people say, "Look, guys, why are you guys going on in the crossplay? Didn't Netherrealm say it was coming soon?" But we all know what that means. Practice mode online coming soon. We don't need it anymore. We don't need it. The, the, we know it's obviously not going to be implemented into uh, que while you're queuing in ranked. So just invite a friend to practice online. We don't need it. The game is not new, and there's not enough in the game to have to practice online. So you don't need to uh, do that. Uh, so that's six months in coming soon. The combat shrine, whatever it's called. That's coming soon. And now, you know, hey, if you're on PC and you want to play in these tournament leagues or Xbox, that's coming soon yep. too. I mean, yep. this is why we say this, because they say a blanket statement like, trust us, it's coming soon. We don't even know <laughs> what that means. Then halfway to lover. Yeah. We don't know what coming soon means. As well as the straw man poll that Ed Boon did when uh, the game was new, and I guess I should have recognized this early on, where people were asking for so many different things and he put the poll up and it says what do you guys want cross play uh i think some of the other not uh, there are other options that was cross play um it's changing the uh, combat league set numbers yeah something else two them. other things were in there that we wanted cross play two other things that we really wanted and then the other one was ranked two out of three and that's the that was the lowest option 
Yeah. And they did that because they knew that was going to be done already. Exactly. And then Tyler does the combat cast that goes, we heard you. We heard you in our poll. <laughs> Ranked is now two out of three. And he created a fake option that nobody asked for. And they say people asked for two out of three. That's not true. No, what people said was, jokingly, they should just make ranked two out of three. So, oh, oh, that's what it was. It was it was crossplay, Wi-Fi filter, one other thing, yeah. a fix uh, to the netcode, ping, a ping yeah. or something. Yeah, it was yeah. like no, it's netcode fix, crossplay, Wi-Fi filter, <laughs> ranked two out of three, and he they gave us ranked two out of three. Before and anything the, else, yeah. and the only reason why people even made that comment was not because they wanted it. They were saying, well, since we can't decline these connections. Don't let us stuck in, be stuck in this longer. The answer would yeah. be fix the connections, not less games in it, right? But they he put an option on the poll, and then they said, we heard you. We heard you. <laughs> so it's just, not surprising, too. Like again, that, they, little things like they that. Have the, like, what are you doing? Yeah, throwing the fact that, again, every combat cast, at least on YouTube, the chat's disabled, you know? Designers really... Knocked it out the park this season, you know, our, our fucking Bowie skins. <laughs> yeah, knocked it out of the park. Well, yeah, I was asking about that, and people were saying the reason they disabled it is to protect 16-bit um, from, from negative comments about, about you, know, you know. You know, interestingly enough, though, on Facebook, it's not restricted. Oh, really? I checked it out last time. I was curious. It's not restricted on Facebook. Well, in my opinion... Whether negative com comments come to 16 bit or not, I don't think they should disable the comment section anyway. I think that just adds more to the whole faceless suit situation that's going on with Mortal Kombat right now. Um, they are, yeah. yeah, it's like they're just they're just talking at us. They're not listening. They're just talking at us. People have been very vocal about what they want. I still can't believe the crossplay situation with, Com with uh, King of the Hill. That when that happened, I was like, did I hear that properly? I rewinded it like three times. I like, surely not. Okay, here we are. And, and again, we complained about uh, about that when we found out six months after the fact. And then they came out after we complained and made a big fuss about it. Oh, guys, we don't worry. It's coming soon. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah the coming soon was really, it really rubbed me the wrong way because I, the first reaction I heard was uh, the one from uh, Rip Serena. And he was just very disheartened because he was actually planning a whole tournament league around not everybody can play because one of the things that, that he did a lot in MK11 was he would have to hold leagues based on platform. So if you were like PC, has to have a PC league, etc. And he was really looking forward to like everybody on all platforms being able to play. And he was planning events on this because they were like cross place coming. And then he was like, you know, hey, I was going to talk about Peacemaker because we thought cross play was coming. And then you know, we, it, 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 you know, we needed this for our tournament scene. Players are not happy with the game. They're bored of the game. At least allow them who is left to all unite and play in tournaments because you're just going to turn those audiences off. Now, if you're a PC player, you can't compete in tournaments. You can't, and you don't, already don't enjoy the game. You're already blocked off, you know, from being, for the, from the competitive scene. And it was just so disheartening. So that's why I covered it. And I, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that they did that. Like that to me was if if I could point to a single moment that would be what I would call the death of this game, it would be that. Yeah. That the online competitive scene in fighting games, that's the new equivalent to your local scene in the old offline days. It'd be like having 100 people that want to play in a tournament offline. But you say only those of you that own the game on the on this console can play, even though they could all play because they're that right there. Y you know, those people would just stop coming out to the local scenes. They wouldn't come out for casuals. Hey, you guys can come out for casuals, but you can only yeah. watch the tournaments. <laughs> Do you think they're actively trying to kill off their competitive scene, though? Because, I mean, that's something that... Um... Sakurai wanted to do with Smash Brothers. That's why he added the trip mechanic in Brawl. Uh, I've mentioned it before and people thought it's ridiculous, but I don't actually think it is. If he's just trying to cater to a casual market and the negative attention is... is uh, Although the casuals are being negative as well, really the critical spaces are like mm -hmm. YouTube and Instagram and, and all that. 
do you think that there might be an effort to just shut down that portion to avoid critical attention? Uh, it would explain the low payouts. <laughs> yeah, and the lack yeah. of crossplay uh, for King of the Hill being a priority. Yeah, honestly. I don't know. I mean, they are in debt. WB needs money. <laughs> I I don't think they're trying to kill their game off because why would they then up the pot to That's true too. They the did come series. up and do that. Yeah. yeah. So I don't I don't know that so bipolar, man, honestly. Yeah. This is what we gotta deal with, guys. You see? <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't and it's very strange to me. I don't I mean, it clearly says to me that they are trying to boost their game by jump and here's what's weird. This is going to have a negative effect because whenever a corporation puts more money into something and it doesn't change anything, it doesn't make things better. Uh, they now went from now imagine and some people, I don't know who put this extra money in. If NetherRealm put this extra money in, and I guess this is a whole new can of worms now. I didn't mean to do this. It, but I just thought about it. If another round put more money into it, Tom, it was Pig of the Hut. He donated all his money. No, <laughs> actually, he, he told me. I, I, yeah, he would never do that. Uh, I, I just, you know, I mean, I don't think anyone loves the game that much. Uh, so, if you're Nether Realm, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, let's say they said we see there's a problem. Maybe more money will fix it. And throwing more money after something that's not working is a terrible idea, but. They throw an extra hundred seventy. This is not chump change. One hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars toward extra. Now you have to realize that if your tournament scene doesn't massively boost, and sales go back up, and player interest go back up, Warner Brothers is going to look at this and say, "Man, what are we doing? Yeah, you, you, you put a hundred seventy thousand dollar extras in, and nothing changed. You want us to put money in?" No thanks. No, it. They'll say it doesn't matter if we put in thirty thousand, or you put in thirty thousand, or two hundred thousand. The result is the same. So if NRS really is the ones putting their money in, wouldn't you want to change the game so that when you put more money in, the interest spikes, and it can show Warner Brothers, look, when you put more money in, people show up. Even though NetherRealm kind of did their own little magic by spiking the game power to bring people back. When you put more money in and the game does even worse or begins to do worse, they're just going to say, well, what does it matter? 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 200,000. Nobody cares. It, it actually does more harm than good. I understand for whoever wins the pro, it's a very, it, it's a very self-serving scene. I don't care about nothing. Give me my 200K and I'll just, I won my money and I'm done. And Mortal Kombat, everybody loses except for whoever wins the Pro Series finale. Everybody loses. Everybody loses. Nether Realm loses. Every the game loses. The community loses. Because if you're Warner Brothers, how are you going to make the case to them? Now we need to put in two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand next time. They're going to say, "Well, thirty thousand didn't did nothing, quote unquote, but two hundred thousand did just the same." So if 30,000 and 200,000 make no difference, why would I want to put any more money in? Why would I want to spend an extra $170,000 for nothing? So yeah. this really hurt the scene, I feel like, more than it helped it. So is the, is the number of entrants not jumped up uh, dramatically since that price increase? No. The interest on the game hasn't. The numbers online haven't, and the, the Twitch viewers mean nothing. The Twitch viewers nothing, and the Google interest <laughs> hasn't. You know how Google has their little interest uh, graphic? Yeah. That hasn't gone up either. Nothing has changed. So it just, if you're a corporation like Warner Brothers, you look at this and say, well, why would we put any more money into it if it, if, if, if it doesn't make a difference? So I think yeah. this actually... It helps only who wins the Pro Series um, finale. Uh, it does not help anybody else. And it's well said. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess that's... that's did you guys, you guys have anything else you want to add on? With all that money they just upped, you would think, you know, according to, was it Pig, that said that uh, they didn't have enough money to do certain things, like implement all these features? Hey. 
It's yeah, a shame. Well, apparently, there's a notice. There's a thing on the Pro Series that says Warner Brothers is not XYZ. So maybe it is all NRS funding this. Um, and again, I'm not sure. But I would say in, in, in doing this and adding more money, things have got to be more successful because yeah. then you're just basically showing anyone else like, you know, your, your parent company, hey, look, money doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter if you put in 30,000, 50,000 or 200,000, nothing changes. So the parent company, if they ever were going to put in money, is more likely to say, we don't want to put in more money if it doesn't change our sales or change our audience viewership or change anything. Like it doesn't change anything. You know, e even if it didn't change the game sales, but it brought people back to the game and they could sell more DLC content, they would say, okay, we're still selling stuff by way of bringing people back to the game and retaining the audience so that we can continue to sell them products and services. It just says we put in more money and all we did was lose money. We didn't, we didn't, yeah. we didn't profit. So I, I think this is a bad sign that they put in this kind of money and nothing changed. Did you guys see the Red Bull committee the other day? No, no. Not. the production value on that was absolutely insane. I haven't seen a tournament done like that in a very, very long time. If ever, they really made it look like, uh, what's the site? It was like, it had a proper hip hop theme. It was in New York. They had like <laughs> so yellow, they had like yellow cab taxis in there. Li Joe was like a, whenever people would lose, he'd be near the yellow taxi and he'd like insult them and they'd get in the taxi and get driven off to the airport. Nice. And, uh, it was just really good. They had like a, I think, I don't know what Rob TV was called, like the final boss or the big boss mm -hmm. or like the battle king or something like that. And he was like moderating the entire thing. It was done as if they were like, it was like the gangsters of New York. Yeah, it was just yeah. really good. And that sort of thing I was watching, I was like, wow, that's incredible. And I saw, um, like I, I saw some leaks with Street Fighter 6 yesterday that made me, it's pissed off a lot of people. They made me very happy because uh, Bison's been gone for a long time. But I I would like, I, when I saw that and I saw how they were treating Street Fighter 6 and then Akuma's coming out and then these these leaks have dropped, I'm like, I might give Street Fighter 6 another go. It's, it's, they, it clearly looks like they care about the community. Which will always be yeah, the, um, the developer. When the developer shows an interest in their game, people take an interest in it. Yeah, definitely. I got to ask you guys, uh, three years ago, four years ago, fuck it. MK11 days. If you would have known that a couple years in the future, the big three would have dropped a game annually, same year span, would you have thought Mortal Kombat would have been on the bottom? If you would have asked me this back in 2013, I would have said it would be Tekken. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably say it'd be Tekken. I've always thought that Tekken, uh, gameplay-wise, was the best quality, but I've always thought that Mortal Kombat... Well, it always has dominated the sales and dominated like the viewers' interest. But to see where it is now, to see like uh, how people have turned against it, because again, people might attribute uh, like rage content to us three, even though I just think we're being critical. The fact of the matter is, is that people are watching this content, they're engaging with it, and this conversation is ongoing on Twitter. So, more seeing more come in the state that it's in right now doesn't bring me any joy, you know. I would have never have made videos like this on Mortal Kombat 10. Even though Mortal Kombat 10 wasn't a perfect game, MK11 and MK1 are such a far cry from what Mortal Kombat used to be. It doesn't even feel like MK anymore. No. How the mighty have fallen. Yeah, how the mighty yeah. have fallen. It just it is very it is very strange. And and I know that there are those that are going to hear this and still cling to the argument of, well, it's selling fine, it's selling good. Two things can be true. A game sales can do well so we agree mortal kombat is selling well it, it, however it's it can be true that the game is not doing well within its audience so yes it is true the game it has sold well it is also true the game's player base is dying its tournament scene yep. is dying its casual scene is dying so financially it was a success i'm not disputing that but in terms of its audience and its fan base, it was not a success. Yeah, retention, things, it's not yes, there. Yes, it's not there. Yeah. Two things can be true. Mortal Kombat, until proven otherwise, can obtain, but it cannot retain. And that is the problem. Obtain gets you sales. Retain helps the community on the back end. If you can't do that. 
That's kind of where we yeah. are. So I'm not not conceding that point. I know Pig always makes that point. Yes, it's true. It, it is selling well. It will, probably will not be seen as a financial failure, which is to Mike Hollow's point. Until that happens, nothing will change. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens in the next Mortal Kombat, yep. I guess. Uh, I'm not holding my breath for any updates for this one, but I've always said that I'll try and be fair as fair as possible. I don't think I'll ever purchase something MK1 related again, but I certainly won't bash it if they take steps in the right direction. It doesn't have to be things that I like, but as long as they fix the game to to, to the point where it's like, okay, this is acceptable to stand along Street Fighter Six and Tekken 8, then until that time comes... I think the only way we're going to get a good MK game, you know, I'm not delusional enough to think that my small channel is going to make them change their mind, but I don't, I think it's better than staying silent if you have a problem. Yeah. Cause at least you can say you tried and that's yeah. kind of what I subscribe to. At least I can say I did my part. I tried. Fuck it. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. It may not work. They may continue going as they go, but at least we tried. Yeah, exactly. Well, well this has been a good talk. Thanks are you guys for joining me and thanks for having me on with you guys on your platforms and everything. And, uh, you know, this was good. Yeah. I, I don't think any of us expected to talk this long, but I think it was a conversation that's been a long time coming. And again, if I sounded like I was tweaking out earlier, I was like two cups of coffee in, haven't slept. I've kind of mellowed out now cause I'm half asleep, but I hope you guys can take a lot from this conversation because again, I think we all offer very unique perspectives. Definitely. So hopefully you guys can take something from this. Obviously we're going to read the comments, uh, probably be replying to them. So again, we don't want this game to, to fail because we hate mortal Kombat. We want this game to be better. We, yeah, we yeah. do what we do because we love this franchise. And if that somehow gets lost in translation, again, we can't prove to you our true intent per se, but you should probably just trust us because we kind of have the track record. We're fans, you know? So yeah, it is this what goes it is. For, this yeah. goes for any series. If I, I say this on my life, if, this, if Yakuza ever went through this, if people think I'm being like hypercritical now, you ain't seen shit yet. If they ever fuck with Yakuza, that's when the gloves are <laughs> off for me. That's when I'll go full Super Saiyan. Like, I, I, any of my favorite franchises, I definitely think that I would speak up about them. It just happens to be Mortal Kombat right now. Facts. Yeah, facts. Well, this has been a good talk. I hope you guys enjoy. Later, guys. See ya.